Chapter 967 Roger's Adventure Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast. I am the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. Yo ho ho, me hearties. Welcome. Welcome all. Today for another very special chapter of One Piece. In fact, the final chapter of not only the year, but of the decade. Yeah, Hopefully well, on the side of, of this thing I'm looking at, it says it's the first uh -huh. jump issue of 2020. That's some bullshit they do at Shonen Jump, where, like, the it's like... It's like how you know when it's it's 2018 and you go to your local Mazda dealership and you're buying the hot 2020 model of the new Mazda whatever the fuck. They just like call it an early one even though it's coming out. I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on. It, it's it's the New Year's this issue. This one this one will come out like on, preparation. on Monday the 30th or something. You know, it's like the thing with the PCP. It's like, uh, well, this would come out, uh, it comes out on Saturdays, I believe, which is today the 28th, which would still be before the new year. But like, because like after the holiday, you don't want to release your Christmas thing like on the 27th or something after it. You have to do it before, but it's not yet that holiday. So, you know, it's one of those ones. It's, it's something. Anyway, it is chapter 967, Roger's Adventure, in the special New Year's edition. It feels like the, the dawn of a new era. Um, and we must say, of course, for the record, that, folks, you heard last week, if you were listening, that Jaimini's Box and Manga Stream are ripperoni and cheese. So if you want to read the new chapters, there's a bit of a, of a vacuum. You can wait for the Viz scans, which, as people so helpfully pointed out in the comments below uh, last week, as well as in my discussion on the Pod D Discord, link down below, uh, the most recent three chapters are available on the Viz Media Shonen Jump page. You can read them there. Hopefully someone will be kind enough to post a link. Perhaps we will. Um, but uh, those come out several days after the scanlations that people typically do, which we will be using just because we want to get as fast as fucking possible. Yeah. Uh, including the newly renamed Poddy po Scans. It's the, it's the same group of lads from last week. Uh, the Cy Mier, Blue Mier, and Cy and the, the other guys. Uh, they've, I don't know why they didn't call themselves the Poddy Scans. They're the P-O-D-I, Poddy Scans. Seems retarded. I thought it was a reference to this. Who knows, man? But uh, they're yeah, maybe they're just trying to differentiate themselves a little bit, get a little their own. Uh, then why brand. even reference it at all? Just do a different name. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure not everybody involved in this knows who we are. There's just most of them. I mean, it's centered around the. I, well, but look, that's fine. I just like if they're it, why this weird halfway measure. Either be one affiliated with the group or be a totally separate one. I mean, that, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Anyway, doesn't matter. They're doing good work, and a couple other people, like on A, there was a some guy slapped together one. It's going around, making the rounds, uh, uh, but our boys have slapped together definitely the highest quality version thus far, and probably will be produced, and uh, they're doing great work, so great great job, everybody, at the Poddy Scans. If you're in the Poddy Discord, you will get a notification there when this new release is done, probably before anyone else in the world has a English translated, and there's a couple rough patches. They're they're improving. This is like their second one ever, so they are improving yeah. and they're making it cleaner. So join the Pod D Discord and 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 be part of the big crew. We're 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 we're, we're getting allies and 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 you know growing our crew and becoming more of a mm -hmm. world power right now. Very true. Very true. Unironically, literally, we'll probably have the fastest high quality scanlation in the world in that Discord, uh, in English, anyway. Um, so there, we see it, people have been reacting to this around on the internet. Now, I, it's been interesting, because I'm, I'm obviously a little bit more on the inside of, of this development. They, I joined the group, and I was just kind of talking with the guys, joined their, their Discord group. And uh, there are some changes being made. Um, some mistakes, I would call them. Some false information, just in the process of trying to put together a chapter. And some outright changes and jokes. Which I, as someone who values, uh, what is it, the um, accuracy of translation more than anything. And I believe we have one on the very first cover page. 
which is the Straw Hats having a New Year's Hanafuda game and eating New Year's bento or something. It looks very nice. It looks very good. Uh, I think that Sanji has a lollipop in his mouth when originally it was not a lollipop. <laughs> I wanted to find the original one to compare it to. I lost the link to it. Uh, but I think that he just did a cigarette and this was just straight up changed. Well, I could be wrong about that. Uh, I mean, maybe I am wrong. Why would that be a change anyone makes? I think it was literally as a joke. Uh, you know, just for an epic goof, because Sanji lollipops. Lol, remember four kids? Hmm. I could be wrong about that. But now we're in a weird thing where we <laughs> are part of the conversation uh, of what has been changed in editorializing. At least I am. Um, okay, well, in any case, uh, double check that, folks. And there's going to be quite a few things that I mentioned like that that I know are inaccurately translated or <laughs> are perhaps questionable. Uh, in the okay. chapter. I, I guess I should join this Discord group as well, because I want to be up to speed on what might be incorrect. I guess I'll, Indeed. for now, uh, just hope that you mm -hmm. know what you're talking about. I did some research, which you will, which you will see as we go. Okay, good. Um, I, I should have checked the slide pop thing, but I'm, I'm, ooh, I'm questioning. I'm questioning. Anyway, very nice cover page. Looks good. Everyone's having a good time at New Year's. The happy family of the Straw Hats, notably without Jean Bay. Where's Gene Bay? I guess he's not in the Straw Hats. Is he that cat on the bottom? Is that he's under he the table? The cat, cat he's, he's under the table, guy. Oh no! Wait! <laughs> oh wait! No, if you look top top left, he's yeah. that fish there. That, that, that fish. That fish. The yeah. Robin's yeah, holding. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Acceptable. It's a it's a subtle nod to Gene Bay's existence. Okay. Fair enough. Anyway, good job, potty scans boys. Uh, let's get into the actual chapter. Chapter six hundred nine hundred and sixty seven. Roger's adventure. Fascinating. Yeah, Let's so uh, last time they were in Skypea, we got the uh, explanation for how the writing uh, appeared mm -hmm. on that poneglyph or Indeed. on the gold next to the poneglyph. Right, right. <laughs> uh, then they're sort of following along from that. Uh, they're arriving at Water 7, uh, which is where uh, t uh, Tom, the mm -hmm. guy who made, uh, what's the name of the ship? The Oro Jackson. Oro Jackson, Oro yeah. Jackson. Uh, he's there, and... Um, yeah. Oh, I, sort I, sorry, of... hang on. I've got just one or two editorial comments. Uh, it's just that there is a translation. Oh, by the way, we will certainly link the uh, the the potty scans version of this down below if you want to read it before listening or, or whatever, follow along or anything like that. Uh, there's an argument going on at the very beginning between Buggy and Shanks about uh, what's colder, the Arctic or the Antarctic. If you remember long, long ago, there's, I mean, there's quite a bit of this happening now. At the very beginning of One Piece, when we saw Buggy's flashback in Orange Town or whatever it was, we see an argument between Buggy and Shanks about what's colder. Now, it was translated as the North Pole or the South Pole. So this, is, it, it, this isn't, like, wrong, I don't think, but it's, like, different from how it was originally translated. But this definitely is a reference to the argument that these two were having way back when we first saw them and Rayleigh, uh, like, at the Did very they... beginning of One Piece. Is the yeah. North and South Pole on the red line or something? Like, where are they? Ah, uh, hmm. I would, I would think that they're... Are they in, like, Wait. North Blue and South Blue or something? If you think about it... You know what? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, I, think don't they, I think North and South understand. Blue are the only likely... Because, you know, the, the, the cold places mm -hmm. at the top and bottom of the planet, as, as seen in Earth... But, like, right. the red line is a very strange thing in this One Piece world. I don't really understand exactly how it looks as a globe. Well, oh, yeah, and, you know, someone else linked uh, in the... I was in the, the pod Discord, which you should definitely join because it's the hotbed of all One Piece discussion activity. Someone linked... Someone had mocked up a, uh, a model, a three-dimensional model that you could rotate uh, on your computer of the entire world of One Piece that I don't think has a name. I forget if the world has a name or not. Um... But uh, it was like a three-dimensional rotational model. You could look at and like see Luffy's ma uh, path that was charted out and like all the known islands. There were mistakes. Things weren't to scale. But it was a very nice model of, in general, hmm. how um, the One Piece map and the... It, like, it, I'd been wanting something like that and following Luffy's path throughout the whole world and seeing how much we visited and how much has been accomplished. Oh, it was really cool. It was really cool. You should, you should check it out, folks, if you can find it. Maybe we'll put it in the show notes if I can find it. What if, what if, um, um, instead of mm -hmm. Earth, uh, this is this planet is called uh, Sea, because there's a lot of water. <laughs> there is a great deal of water. It's true. Um, well, no matter, no matter. In, in any case, so I just wanted to reference that. 
and we see uh, Roger having a conversation with uh, Ozen and uh, the Mink Boys, asking. So now, now they've been to Skypea. He's real interested in these Poneglyphs. They're looking around, and so now, just as happens in One Piece, eventually the conversation came up after years of traveling together or whatever. Uh, oh, the Wano has a stone. What color well, is it? They they it's haven't red. been traveling together. Roger and, and oh, you're, you're right. They've only just started right. traveling, so maybe a few weeks. Well, t- to be fair, they had already traveled to Skypea and to yeah, Water Seven. The, now from there, there has been like a time mm, for them to time. for to explain this. So yeah, they know there's a red poneglyph in Wano, which is the ones he's been mm, looking so for. We, I he, think we had that confirmed, but now we 100 percent know. Yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah. one in Wano. Uh, Big Mom mm-hmm. has one that he oh. already has the rubbing of. And interestingly, he does not say where the other is, but we, he, he uh, interestingly phrases it as, I have a feeling about where the other one might be. My guess, you got bets? I'm betting Elbaf. That's just a total guess. There's no proof of that at all, hmm. but I'm just throwing it out there. In terms of narrative storytelling, that would be nice, because I suspect that'll be like the Shanks place. It'll be another Yonko. If I was writing One Piece, that's what I would do. But there's yeah. no, you know, no proof or anything. I, I definitely think if it is Elbaf, I... Mm-hmm. I think we won't see that happen mm-hmm. in this. Well, actually, uh-huh. no. They get to the... Well, later oh, they, the... we get past it, so we don't see any, any more hints other yeah, they... than that one line. In okay. This. Yeah, we know yeah. there's the Big Mom one, there's the 101, and the uh, Mink one, Zo one. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, we only get three. Okay. We, we know of the existence of uh, Wano, Zo, Mink Place... Uh, big moms, and then the mystery one that we don't know that we have to you know, okay. guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely seems mm-hmm. like it'll be Elbaf because that's the the big place that has been hinted. I'll just point out on this point that uh, the the last translation from A. If anybody read that, there was a line in here that said like I was given it by Whitebeard. That is that is not correct. Like that that was in the wrong the last translation. It's wrong. It's not true. He's he does not know or he doesn't clarify where or when he got it. So. There, there are some things where like that. Where or when he got what? The, the rubbing? Like, th- this other one that he says, I have a feeling about where it might be. The, like, the last translation was just, it mentioned Whitebeard. That's not <laughs> part of it at all. So, uh, just so you know, it, this one is a much better translation than, uh, than yeah. the last one. Yeah, the whole thing with I have a feeling, there's a lot of feeling yeah. in this chapter. Roger sure and is. Odin, they feel things. They're, they're really feeling it. They're really feeling it. There's a lot of... Uh, Instinct going on, and instinct uh, is kind of just undetermined forces that the author needs to go in a certain way. But hey, that's okay. Not not a problem. Not a problem. It's yeah. all working well for the narrative. So they come back to Water 7. Uh, they mm-hmm. see Tom. They talk about the train. You know, it's like, haha, we've seen things before, and we're seeing them again. Indeed. We see Tom and Gold Roger hanging out, which we, I mean, we, we learned about their relationship all the way back in Water 7. with Cut- And there's Iceberg with his little hat on. There's a Kokoro, the mermaid. And She's Frankie. looking fine. And fucking Frankie talking to Odin. Frankie had met Odin when he was a young boy. And he's offered to join the fucking Gold Roger Pirates. Because they like orphans, I guess, for some reason. Fair enough. Cuddy Flam could have joined the fucking Oro Jackson and the Gold Roger Pirates. And he's probably, like, equally as old, give or take, as, like, Shanks and Buggy. Maybe, like, a little bit younger. But, uh... Frankie says, fuck pirates, you'll abandon me too, just like I'd been abandoned by my parents or whatever. But Odin just laughs it off. And, and, and you know, so I was thinking that, like, does this mean that Frankie met Gold Roger as well? I, I guess he didn't, te- it doesn't it imply doesn't... he would technically met him, but he's, like, right over there in the distance, Gold Roger. So, like, I really wonder if, um, like, yeah. Frankie even thinks about the fact that Gold Roger is someone he has been in the vicinity of. Maybe it's just not as big a deal to him because he was alive at the time. Like, but for all the other characters, the younger characters, it's like, whoa, Gold Roger, he's such a mythical you know, guy. Not to be an asshole about it, but Frankie definitely is one of the crew members who's been relegated to mostly meme status. So the narrative spends very little time worrying about what Frankie feels or, yeah. like, potential knowledge he might have, as well, which is too bad. But I, I watched this video by this guy about, yeah. like, how Robin has become, is, like, so OP mm-hmm. in all these ways, but she's underutilized for the convenience of the story. Because if she said, if she said anything, uh, then all the information would be revealed and the story would lose all of its mystique. 
And it's because she knows so much. Yeah. She knows so many things it's, about it's, everything. It's that same. It's, weird. it's a little bit similar with Frankie. Is like if he, if he, like he's an older guy. He's yeah smart and he knows all these things. It's just sort of, yeah, we can't really focus on him or Brooke or Robin. Mm. They they just have to do the funny things. And Frankie and Brooke have their funny moments. Um, mm. But Robin doesn't have enough, and, which is why yeah. she's like Robin one gets... of the mm. the least seen of the whole sc- Straw Hats. It's really it really sucks. You are not wrong. You are not wrong. Cause I mean, and, and I mean, this reminds me of the thing that I brought up many times back in Dress Rosa or whatever, which is before we started doing the show. But nonetheless, I would always talk about how um, how annoying it was for me with Sabo the fact that Robin. Ever since the time skip, Robin had met Sabo, knew Sabo, knew he was alive, and chose not to tell Luffy because, ah, uh, um, just never came uh, up. All right, it just never. And and uh, this whole, everything about this, like yes, it is all covered under this this blanket that lies over all of One Piece. That's. These characters are just focused on the moment. They're focused on the adventure. They're not worried about details that aren't directly relevant right now, except when it's narratively convenient. And that can lead to frustration. One Piece is not a perfect series, obviously, but it is really good. It's just better than all the others. So, you know. (laughs) You know, some of my favorite moments watching Mm -hmm. the One Piece anime, uh, filler Mm. or not filler, has always Mm. been the in-between moments where nothing's really happening and they're just sort of sailing to the next location and people are just on the ship uh, either like fishing Mm -hmm. or talking or just sleeping and those little interactions they have on the ship are just some of my favorite like moments I want more like talking scenes but there's so much to be important that is in the like to show that you can't really slow down and have like a, a talk about nothing in particular scene Especially now that we're in late game One Piece. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all political and stuff. Oda's under so much pressure to move the plot along fast. It's a it's a delicate balancing act. I would definitely argue that things have tipped a little bit too far away from like just enjoying the adventure into moving the plot along. But at the same time, you gotta have patience for a guy trying to wrap up a story going for so long. It's just a little like sometimes this happens where because you don't write scenes Mm -hmm. where they're not doing anything and they're just sailing. Um, you kind of forget that that yeah. does happen. We just don't show it. And so conversations that should come mm. up don't because, you know, the things that we don't see essentially don't exist, even though they clearly do have downtime in which to have these sort of conversations. Indeed. Indeed. It's it's just one of these tricks of writing a series like this. It's never going to be perfect. Yep. Uh, well, in any case, so the Cuddy Flam thing, uh, Frankie may or may not have met Gold Roger. I- I'm guessing because Oda doesn't show Frankie actually meeting Gold Roger, he's kind of subtly implying Frankie was too busy. He didn't have time for these pirates. He was just, you know, doing his shit. Met Odin. That's cool. Didn't meet, uh, what? I wonder if Frankie will remember, like, later in Wano that, like, oh, yeah, I did fucking meet this guy. That would be I- nice. You know, he probably doesn't know that that was Odin. He doesn't know what he looks like. He just saw some guys like, oh, you're a pirate? Fuck off. And he just went back you to know, his little You know, if tinkering. I had time, I'd be curious to know if anybody had gone back and read, like, the, you know, like the Water 7 flashback. Was that Annie's Lobby? Whenever Frankie's flashback was, I think it was during Annie's Lobby. No, it was, whatever. Whenever that was. When, like, we learn about, because uh, I, I think there was a time when Frankie, or as Cuddy Flam, learned that Tom had built the Oro Jackson for Gold Roger and, like, was really impressed by that, which would imply that he knows who Gold Roger is, is at least mildly interested. Okay, because Tom and Iceberg and Kokoro are right here talking to Gold Roger. It's not like Gold Roger just visited and didn't say hi to anybody. Like, Tom, who, like, has already adopted Cuddy Flam at this point, I think? I'd have to examine the fucking timeline, but that sure seems like the way it's gone. Like, he would he would at least give a shit that, like, his, like, adopted father is hanging out with the King of the Pirates. That seems worth notice to some degree. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. Um, so if anybody wants to look into this, feel free. Perhaps I will later. I, I'm just wondering if it's, like, a little bit odd, given the characterization of, for, for Cuddy Flam to not care as much in this moment. But I don't know. I don't know. Like, wouldn't he want to look at the fucking ship? 
Like, oh wait, it hadn't conquered the Grand Line yet. That's it's still working oh. on that. Well, that's sort so of perhaps strange. It's a like, less yeah, if like, we yeah. should try and go back and read that that moment because, like, if he's mm-hmm. if he's met or has understood, like he's known Roger has been around before. Mm-hmm. Like, is like at this time, Roger is just one of Tom's clients, or whatever. Um, but then later, he just suddenly cares that he's like. Wait a minute! Wait a fucking minute! I okay. For, forgive me, everybody, but, like, I remember thinking back to what, like, one could reference this. I should go read this. If any one of you fucking assholes get on my case for not remembering every detail about this, I'm sorry I can't remember every single thing perfectly well. But, like, I, what I remember is, like, Frankie as, Cut, whatever, Cut, Cutty Flam, like, being impressed by Tom because Tom had built the Oro Jackson, which was the Pirate King's ship, which, like, mathematically speaking would have to be, like, a few months after this point, at the earliest, because the ship had not conquered the Grand Line. He had not become Pirate King yet at this point. So maybe Cuddy Flam has not been adopted by Tom yet? Oh, yeah, you know? And he's just kind of living among the scrap right now? He's living among the scrap. That would make sense. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, he's just around. And he just happened to bump into Odin, who's just some guy, as far as he knows, and he currently hates pirates because his parents abandoned him and they were pirates or whatever. Man, look at look at little cute baby Frankie. He's so cute. Oh, I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, okay. Anyway, I, I think that's the stats. That's the real shit. But we'll 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 see. We'll see. Yeah. So then they're they're anyway. Yo ho ho ho. Yeah. Here we yo go. Ho, ho, yo ho ho ho. They're they're singing Binks Sake as mm-hmm. they continue along. I think that image there with uh, Toki and Odin is with Hiori growing a bit older. She's getting hair. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, there's a big elephant. And then there's the the is huge. That, is that Jack? Is that Jack with his mammoth telephone? No, it's Jack. Jack's dad. J- j- joke. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. And uh, we see Odin sailing by Tequila Wolf, which is where those slaves are building that giant bridge. Yeah. Which is pretty cool, but also fucked up. Yeah. The the bridge. I feel it's it's come up a number of times. Obviously, the Revolutionary Army on there. It's a big mm-hmm. old bridge. I wonder if there'll be any sort of relevance to it before the end of the series. Like, when it gets finished, something will happen? Well, I or mean, will I it think not the main finished? premise... It, it, it said that it would take, like, decades, or I think they would say, like, centuries to finish this bridge yeah. between islands. Because it's such, it's such a Sisyphean task to build bridges between every fucking island. Um, something like that, so... You know what would be I mean, I, really I love cool? it as, a, as an example of, like, the insane things that the Tenryubito ask their their underlings to do and, like, their crazy expectations. You know um, what would be, like, completely implausible and would never happen, yeah. but also really cool, <laughs> is to have, mm. like, a series of video games where you play as each of the Straw Hat crew in the two-year time skip uh, period. Mm-hmm. So you would have, a like, a... You would play as Robin on the bridge, and that would be like a video game thing where you do quests and stuff, and you figure out things. That would be cool. I just want to no. know more about all these these strange places. That sounds fun. And I would also love a game where I could like build a bridge between... Oh, Minecraft. Got it. I'm going to play some Minecraft, guys. I'm going to build the bridge. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so next up, we see them headed to Fishman Island. A- actually, I mean, I don't... Is it implied that they visited... Is that a poneglyph those guys are dragging, or just giant stones to build the bridge? Because I'm no, just... No, that's I'm, just a big stone. I'm following the logic here. Tequila Wolf is in the East Blue, as I recall. Hang on, let me just double check that. Tequila Wolf, one piece. I'm like 99% isn't, isn't sure it's in the East Blue. Isn't that a guy's name? It, it is. It's, it's, no, it's what's called, like, the construction site where they're building the bridge is called Tequila Wolf. What about that's that like the name giant of the bridge. guy that's on the Blackbeard Pirates? Isn't he called Tequila as well? That guy's name is San Juan Wolf, oh, I believe. Oh, there must be related. This must be his brother. He, he drinks tequila and he builds bridges, and that's, you know, why, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna say, we, we just saw these guys, they were in, they were in Skypea, which is obviously on the Grand Line. Then they were at um, Water 7, which is obviously, like, that's similar to the path that the Straw Hats took. I think it is exactly the same, actually. Yes. Um, then we see them, miraculously, traveling all around, uh, like they're in jungles and on the sea, blah, blah. At, at, and then at Tequila Wolf, which is in the East Blue. And then we see them at Shabon Archipelago heading to Fishman Island. Why did they go to the East Blue 
which is not directly like on the path to where they were headed next, which mm. is implied to be Fisherman Island, because I think they knew that's where they needed to go, because they learned about that on uh, on Skypea. Why the detour? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was yeah. just like uh, he didn't think so much about like the location. It's just sort of to imply that they travel a lot and here are all the things they see. But it is it, it is mm. notable that yeah he. Odin is there with his binoculars looking up mm -hmm. at the bridge at a rock that is being... It looks like a, it's a cube. You know, it could be like maybe they're looking for mm -hmm. a poneglyph in the East Blue. I don't know why they would be. But like what else could this be implying? That he's just looking at them? He kind of goes, I, goes without I mean, saying that he's looking at them because they go there. I, I'll say... I think that perhaps Oda... And I'll, we'll get back to this as we get to the end of the chapter. I think he might be just trying to use this as, like, this is how Odin learned about, like, the inhumanity of the Ten Ryubito and about, uh, yeah, the, like, the evil of the world government, kind of. But more likely. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, in, in any case, they're at Shabondi. They're hanging around. They're headed underwater to Fisherman Island. They, they do the coding, all that good stuff. Um, maybe this is where Rayleigh learned his trade of coding ships that he would later use for well, the Straw Hats. Surely the, they've, the, the Gold Roger pirates have already done this because... One, they know um, the fishermen, and two, they've probably. already <laughs> like apparently conquered every island except for this one last one that they're looking for. Pretty much true. Yeah, you, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, so, oh, and and as we're headed down there, of course, we have this moment where we see uh, both Odin and uh, Roger are being like, "Hey, do you hear something weird?" These two characters are able to hear something mysterious, and it's clearly implied to be the voices of the Sea Kings, as we have previously heard. Both Luffy and uh, Momonosuke, and of course Shirahoshi as well, able to communicate uh, with these Sea Kings. So we hear the voice of all things is active in these boys. It seems. Um, so all right, I'm boom, a little confused about what happens next because uh, mm -hmm. Big Boy uh, Neptune appears. It presumably mm -hmm. he says, "Where is all this noise coming from?" And that maybe implies that he has the voice as well, and he he can hear the Sea Kings. And the Sea Kings are saying, hey, look at this pirate um, ship. What's going on? Hmm. You might be right. I'm a... You know, okay, th this section is a bit confusing to me as well. I think he's just implying that there's currently some rowdy pirates on the way, but I, I could be wrong, so well, I, I think I'm, it's, I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, it's not like a pirate ship is making a lot of noise mm -hmm. through the water. It wouldn't make that much noise, I don't think. I think it's, it's, I mean, maybe, it's I being know. implied that, like, Neptune has this same hearing ability... And the um, reason that um, mm -hmm. Roger and uh, Odin are hearing noises is because of that panel where the Sea Kings are looking at them and being like, huh, what's that? They're thinking, and then Neptune mm -hmm. is hearing the thoughts, and that's why he's come in the sea. Maybe that's how he became king, because he has that power. <sighs> okay, this thing about him becoming king. Okay, well, I'm not sure about any of that. I think it might just be that they're loud. But I see your point, and this is rather confusing. But let's, let's move on, because we can comment on this. Roger's like, hey, it's me. So obviously he had met Neptune before. I'm Roger. Hey, what's going on? Neptune says, hey, what's going on? Are you the one making all the noise? Uh, so, uh, again, maybe that is related to the Sea Kings. Not sure. But he's clearly talking about some fucking noise you can hear. Uh, so now we're, we're on Ryugu Kingdom or whatever, the ca castle or the, the city or whatever. Roger's being like, we haven't done anything wrong. We're just prophecies hanging out here. But Neptune stopped them specifically because there is a prophecy that has been said which he wants Roger to fulfill which is, the doors to Fishman Island will be open for everyone, and the border between our worlds will no, be no I, more. I don't think that's what this text is implying. It's, it says, I stopped you to talk about a prophecy, mm -hmm. something only a man of your caliber could achieve. He's saying that Roger is a likely suspect in this prophecy. Yeah, I, I agree. But I, he's, I he's, not, he's not asking him to do it, is, is the thing. He's saying that this prophecy that they've heard of will, like, ruin mm -hmm. Fishman Island, and Roger... You are a likely culprit. I'm stopping you. Why have you? Why, what are you doing? And Roger's like, "Hey, am I not doing anything?" Right. Yes, I agree. And I, I believe that this is the same prophecy, not the one that Madame Charlie made later during Fishman Island, where she was like, "Luffy will be the one to destroy Fishman Island." This is I see. I'm trying to remember back. There was another prophecy, I think, about how someone will like what he's talking about right here. How Fishman Island's doors will be opened and the border between worlds will be no more. I think that that was discussed previously. 
Is this new to you, or does this sound familiar? It sounds familiar to me. I think it's... I don't remember, like... No, I do remember. I, it's like the, the, the prophecy as it was originally said was something like, Fishman Island will be no more when Luffy comes. Mm -hmm. And at some point, maybe it was uh, elaborated to be, like, the borders between the worlds. Be Actually, I don't know. I, I'm okay. Uh, I'm thinking it's not exactly is... the same, but that's it. That's why it's a little confusing, and I also don't know yeah. how correct this translation is. Like how I mean, accurately see, the those same are, it that's... is. Those are good questions. Those are good questions. Um, I just, out of interest, I will want to read the Viz one when it comes out, just to compare it to, because I don't trust any one source. I want to, I want to bounce it off of that. But it seems that, uh, so I, I checked the wiki, and it's talking about her past and whatever. So, so okay, during. Fishman Island, Charlie has her vision of, like, Luffy destroying the Fishman Island that we think is involved with, like, the end of One Piece and big world uh, destruction things. Whatever. Okay, cool. I'm reading, like, in her history, it said that at four years old, she uh, predicted that the Great Age of Pirates would happen. And so she is three years old at this point in the series we see her. So that would mean one year later from where we are in the narrative right now. When, at the age of four, she would predict the Great Age of Pirates, which would be right about, pro probably right before Gold Roger was about to be executed, um, or, or something around the time. Because surely it wouldn't be afterward when we see no, things already yeah. happening. One would think it would have to happen before. Um, and it also says that uh, at the age of three, she predicted a disaster uh, that would happen after the Mermaid Princess is born. I don't know. I think that's a reference to this very chapter, though. So I don't, yeah, okay. So that's this chapter. Okay, so I think this is the first time we're hearing about this particular prophecy. So I, I'm just trying to get these details straight. There doesn't okay. appear to be. A I don't know. I don't know why one. that sounds so familiar. I think it's just sort of like fan theories about like the the grand the red line breaking and connecting all the. It's oceans. similar to the one with Luffy, like saving you know or destroying slash possibly saving Fishman Island. So there's some redundant prophecies are tricky things, man, and the details matter. And yeah, what the hell wanna... is the deal with Shiarliar? Right here. She just has a magical ability to see the future. She just was born it with it. She's always right. That's just how she is. That seems to be the case. It can't be a devil fruit, can it? Is there is there like proof that it isn't a devil fruit? I would say that the proof that it isn't a devil fruit is that she can swim in the water, I think. Well, which I believe do we see her do. swimming? I mean, she is in the, the air pocket city, and I don't think we've seen her outside of it in, like, the water. Uh, well, I mean, the, the real thing, is, even if it is, in fact, a devil fruit, it doesn't really matter. But she just has the power. It's been clearly stated yeah. by enough characters for me to take it seriously. Yeah. So, I guess it's fine because, it is, like, Hawkins it. also mm -hmm. shows that, uh, like, seeing the future is a, a literal power you can learn, mm -hmm. I guess. Or, like, have the gift. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, so, so, we're hearing this prophecy from Neptune. Charlie made it. Uh, the doors to Fishman Island will be opened for everyone, and the border between our words will be no more. He thinks Roger's the man to do it. Probably. So, on that... And at this very moment, there is an explosion or something, and the door that allows ships into the harbor has been damaged. Like, they're like, Roger, did you do this? Of course, Roger's standing right in front of him. He couldn't have done it. And they're like, no, of course we haven't done it. But... They're discussing how there's a hole in the, in like, there, whatever. The bubble has a hole in it. We got to go patch it. The d day of disaster has come, but it wasn't us. But then, but Madame no, Charlie but then clarifies. Charlie, the yeah, day of yeah. disaster will only happen after a mermaid or the mermaid princess is born. Mm -hmm. And so, at this point, Neptune so I, hasn't I, married. He hasn't ha doesn't have a daughter. So, like, oh, you're going to have a daughter. And he's like, huh, what? Um, Indeed. Yeah, so. Well, I, I think all this is to say, regarding this particular prophecy, I think this was all to say that Madame Charlie, when she was three, made a prophecy about the event that she also saw during Fishman Island, only at that point it was like a specific one about Luffy. But I, I mean, we don't know this, but I think that this day of disaster is almost assuredly linked with the, the thing she saw about Luffy destroying Fishman Island. There were two separate prophecies about the same event. It's a little confusing, but I think that's yeah. That's what, what my is being first thought here. was as well. I just wasn't sure mm -hmm. that they were the same one because obviously Luffy isn't mentioned in this first one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't know. So that's uh, the best uh, I yeah, got. here's here's my question: What did make the mm -hmm. explosion in the bubble? 
Was it just like I have no fucking idea. Was it I just don't like know. a like you know? It's a thing that happens sometimes. Like the the pressure. Okay, just so gets they, to the it. door that allows ships. Our army has suffered damage. I I have no fucking idea if this is like referencing some event that we already knew about. Like it they, clearly isn't the big disaster. Like they brushed I don't past know. it so quickly that there's n like it's not even yeah. enough panel to s like even see what it is. It's just like off they, in the distance something explodes. Go patch it. Ah, uh, jeez. In no way is it clarified what actually caused it. It isn't even hinted. Like, everything about it implies it wasn't the Roger Pirates. They weren't there. It's a coincidence. They didn't do anything. But they also don't give any other explanation as to what it actually was. So I just don't know. I have no fucking idea what actually did it. Is it just a coincidence? Something happened? What happened? What the fuck happened? I don't well, get it's, it. Well, it's the door that allows ships into the harbor that exploded. So, mm -hmm. I think either it's a mystery and we're not supposed to know, and it will be revealed as, like, some That's character that was l lurking around at the time. I don't know who mm -hmm. possibly could be. this. Was it Baby this, Hody uh, Jones? Flashback. Did he do it? I mean, if no. it was, it wouldn't be very important because that guy's no, you know, no. currently locked up and no, not relevant anymore. Very true. Very true. It, it could okay, possibly well, be like a like a reference to an event that was talked about during the Fishman Island arc that we just forgot about, but I don't know. Well, uh, see, I, I was thinking of that, and I was thinking back to like the whole Otohime flashback, which is the main thing, but nothing in there would would line up with this perfect. Like Otohime, I don't. She hasn't had any of her kids yet, I don't think. And like everything bad that happens with Otohime is like after she's already a mother. Uh, or, or at least after she's had, uh, like, the Mermaid Princess, which we know, they clarify very clearly, she has not had yet. Uh, which is going to be in ten years from now, so I don't think she's even had any of her kids. So, I, it doesn't line up for me, the timeline, with anything from that flashback and those events. So I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. Well, in this, in this page here, um, where mm -hmm. they're talking about getting married and stuff, like, he only became yeah. king a few months ago, Neptune says. Um, and then this one guy talks about Otohime... Um, has been leading, yeah, the Shirley had a prophecy, another one, uh, containing information how a carp will marry into the royal family, and it's like, oh yes, I'm going to marry a carp, I know this, that my life is uh, predetermined and I have no agency, yeah, shit. Uh, they sure so, are, matter of uh, fact, about how little control he has over his life, and he sure doesn't seem to care. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, um, so uh, Otohime, uh, who is a apparently a, a carp, um, I didn't realize. So, hang on. I don't understand this. Queen Otohime is a fucking goldfish mermaid. That is that a is a goldfish a carp? Am I missing well, something? Well, it could it could be a mistranslation. I think that the whatever they're saying I'm is like I'm sensing many mistranslations yeah. in this whole section here. What, what, this seems What also, they're saying uh, What is this about Okay, go sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, what they're saying is that there was a prophecy mm -hmm. how a specific type of fish uh, will marry into the royal family. Uh, Neptune mm -hmm. isn't married yet, and so they're saying again, uh, well, afterwards, that Otohime, so pr presumably mm -hmm. she is of this uh, carp or goldfish, whatever it is, uh, thing. She has heard this prophecy and has been leading political demonstrations demanding the king to better the relationship with humans. She is taking this prophecy mm -hmm. and using it as like, ah, that means I could be the queen and therefore would be in a better political position to better the relationship with humans, like my dream. Like my dream for to unite everyone. And she she, sure. she goes, you know, gold digging, or power digging, or whatever you call it, uh, mm -hmm. after this, and marries Neptune. And they have a, they, it, you know, luckily they really love I each other as well. It, so it's, yeah, it's I'm all... wondering if this is intentional. Otohime sure reminds me of Princess Diana. Uh, well, with the murder, and also being political, and like a person of the people. I didn't know if she was from the royal family until now, but I guess this confirms that she was, in fact, not a royal family member, but married into it. And, yeah. uh, that's fair For enough. For political fair gain, enough. so... That's cool. <laughs> interesting. Indeed. Oh, God. Alright, so the next thing that happens... So mm -hmm. the, the child's prophecy about Fishman Island being destroyed, everyone's thinking about it. This prophecy stuff, obviously mm -hmm. it has only been happening for the last three years at, at most. So people are like, oh, these prophecies this kid is doing is like, they're always true. I wonder what else she's going to say. And they're yep. all like huddled around and really hanging on over every word and doing things based on them. So Charlie is like really, really important and will 
shape the, the, the Fishman Island for years to come. Indeed. Her, I mean, actually, when, if you think of prophecy in a certain way, what a prophecy actually is, is a time travel of information. I heard that in some movie somewhere. So actually, this whole thing about time travel not existing or only being forward, like with Toki, using the Toki Toki no me to only go forward in time, there actually is time travel backwards, which is the information that Madame Charlie has, uh, which does, in fact, control the universe. Or, you know, they're always correct. There's no ambiguity about it. Uh, and they are, in fact, incredibly important to the overall events, at least, you know, with everything that she mentions in them. So uh, she's pretty fucking important uh, overall. And, like, so many theories involve the weapons, the, the ancient weapons, and fucking Poseidon, and, like, the destruction of Fishman Island and Marie Joie, which it's directly underneath, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, pr pretty, pretty fucking important stuff, Madam Charlie. Arlong's sister. What do you know about that? No, really? Uh, I didn't know that. It's yeah, they're they're brother and sister, Madame Charlie and Arlo. Yep, it's true. It's true. It's Whoa. true. Wow. So incidentally, so they go to look at uh, the poneglyphs, and here we see. Now I did some research on this. In interestingly, there are in fact two poneglyphs in this little grove. Now, if you all recall, uh, Nico Robin famously visited the poneglyph in the wherever the fuck this was. Now I double, triple, quadruple checked this. When Nico Robin came here, there was, in fact, one poneglyph. One poneglyph, not two, which we see right now. So, one of these was removed. And also, okay, explain this shit to me, what's going on here. Odin states, clearly, as the man who can read poneglyphs, he says, one of these poneglyphs doesn't seem important. The next sentence is from Neptune that says, yes, the other is an apology from a man named Joy Boy. Are they implying that one of them doesn't matter at all and the other one is an apology from Joy Boy? Because that seems nonsensical. Because they then talk yeah. about how there's a weapon that can shake the world. They must be saying that the Joy Boy one the Joy is, Boy the apology is the not important one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Although, okay. the fact that this is a thing mm -hmm. is clearly an actually important thing. Like an apology from Joy Boy from for what and why is presumably that it's one a fucking poneglyph done? that's a big deal yeah like Joy Boy you know mm -hmm. the 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 big important guy who I don't really know much about right. um he he pre presumably wrote an apology poneglyph and mm -hmm. sent it um if you look at the two of them one of them it looks like is either covered or. Like, one of them is covered in something, like moss. Yeah. And the other is a, a little more pristine. Mm hmm. Um, so I assume the new one is the apology. So, what is mm, the apology for? Maybe. Is it saying, uh, sorry, that poneglyph was a lie? If I remember correctly, uh, well, uh, we, we have the information of this. Raman discussed the contents of that poneglyph. I, I could double check this, but I believe the gist was it was an apology, like, to the residents of Fishman Island for not being able to save them or, like, to fulfill a promise, which I believe was heavily implied to relate to um, to the Ark, and which obviously, again, relates to, like, saving them from, like, their segre segregated world underwater and, like, bringing them up to the surface world. I think it involves kind of all of those factors. And it was an apology for, like, not following through to, like, make that happen at the time. Um, so there was something, you know, going on with that. So and, they, Odin, and Odin here just says, no, nah, it's not important. It doesn't seem very important. Doesn't seem okay, very important. Odin. But, like, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, then they quote, like, more importantly. Wait a so he's saying the, the more important one, the one that isn't the apology quote, the weapon that could shake the world, the entire world isn't here. Well, actually, is that... Oh, wait a minute. He's not quoting yeah, that polyglyph. He's just saying um, that um, the weapon that could shake the world, whatever it is, isn't located here. Okay, hang on. I was wrong. I was wrong. Odin... Okay, this thing about one, one of them definitely disappears because it isn't there when Robin gets there when we had the Fishman Island arc. Odin says one of these doesn't matter. The other one is the apology from Joy Boy. What the fuck is on the one that doesn't matter? What do you mean it doesn't matter, Odin? It's, so it is, it is in fact not clarified what is on this quote-unquote not important poneglyph. We just don't know. It is not stated here what is on this unimportant well, hang one. On. And we know that this quote not important one disappears before Nico Robin gets okay. there. Okay. 
Um, thing to think then. The reason yeah. the Roger Pirates are going to Fishman Island is because Skypea mm -hmm. led them there to find, right. uh, pr presumably, the weapon that could shake the entire world. Which is why I was curious as to why they went to fucking East Blue to see To Kill yeah. a Wolf when they knew they were and supposed to come here. But okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. So, weapon that could shake the entire world, go mm -hmm. to Fishman Island, they go there. Um, it either could be that it doesn't seem important in relating to the weapon, because it doesn't talk mm -hmm. about the weapon. Sure. And... And slash or it could be that it doesn't seem important for their quest for the road poneglyphs because it's not red. But it's just weird that they would uh, they would they would seem to be implying that this apology from Joy Boy is in fact important the way it's phrased here, which is I mean could there be a definition of a less important poneglyph? It's just an apology for something. You see what I'm saying? It seems yeah. An odd way. This to This seems it. like one of those situations where I would love to see another translation. Same here, sis. Same here. Viz, I'm coming for your ass. We'll see. We'll see what they say. A couple yeah. days. But uh, regardless, we don't have any mm -hmm. information as to where one of the whatever polyglyph uh, goes after mm -hmm. this. So right. that's still missing. And presume they, they, they can't just introduce this. The, oh, by the way, there were two and one of them has been That's got to be relevant. It it's, has to be It important. has to be relevant to have brought up in any way. Mm -hmm. So we'll learn about that later, I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe here's just 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 a crazy thought. We we see it later in the in in um fucking Gene Bay's. Uh, is it possible that all of this we're getting all conspiratorial? I mean, uh, frankly, it's warranted. This is all very suspicious. There was a thing where Gene Bay, in his cover arc, he finds a poneglyph underwater and brings it to Big Mom. Um, is could it possibly be this poneglyph? And incidentally, in that arc, that poneglyph wasn't important and didn't matter. What could Oda really just be saying? Like, oh, this is that poneglyph and it's not important, so don't worry about it. Hmm. That's so strange. Because we do not get etchings of the other poneglyphs in Big Mom's... Because she had, yeah. I think she had three, if yeah, I remember correctly. She had three or four and one of them was red and Brooke got the red one, which Maybe is the Maybe Brooke did one. get all of them and I'm forgetting. I feel Ugh. like he only had time to get the one and I can't remember exactly, but I feel like... Like they, I mean, they, the, the they knew they were looking for the red have one. Everyone. Right. And the, there's no way that the Straw Hats have actually encountered every poneglyph that's out there. No. They must be missing many of them, which, which is fine, yeah. which is not a problem. Well, but, I think um, in, if, if that's the case, like that was the Jimbei thing. Um, mm -hmm. Jimbei found the missing one that was under the sea. He brought it to Big mm -hmm. Mom. Big Mom has it. And when Jimbei joins the crew... Uh, and that, like, they realize they need to know what's on that poneglyph, Jinbei will be like, ah, I gave that to Big Mom. And they're like, eh, we have to go back, lol. Right, right. That that might be what it's setting up for, uh, some sort of a thing. To, I hope not. Some, so, some sort of a reason <laughs> to involve themselves with Big Mom again? I don't know. I mean, it, I, again, just checking, like, the, this whole Rio poneglyph thing is supposed to be, like, the message carried by all the poneglyphs that contains, like, the true history. So, like, it would, like we, we are seeing Roger... Like, 13 years ago, he got to Lodestar Island. By the way, I was happy to see everyone is, in fact, using Lodestar Island, not Roadstar. You silly boys. Um, and, uh, and, but, and so we, we are seeing currently them, like, retracing their steps over 13 years, going back and, like, scouring the world for all the secrets to get, you know, everything they need to get to, uh, you know, Laugh Tale and, and do all that shit. And, like, I don't, I don't know. It's not necessarily implied that they visited every place where there are poneglyphs. I don't think that that's stated clearly. Uh, they were simply looking primarily for the red poneglyphs, I think. So I'm not exactly sure if this Rio poneglyph thing is still super important to the narr narrative. Uh, if it is, then well, it's we're, we're going to have super some exploring to do. It's super important for Robin, specifically, because that's, that's the whole thing that O'Hara was but then trying again, to do. To, to learn about the Void Sentry. I think the real Poneglyph is about mm -hmm. that, and it might just be that the one Jinbei gave to Big Mom is that, and nobody knows because nobody else but Robin can read them. Wouldn't it be weird for Odin to say... Like, Odin's seeing that... I mean, one of them. It, it may be that one. It might just be a, a totally different one. He says it's not important. He says it's not important. You would think that's kind of important. I mean, he'd give a little bit of a shit. Uh, yeah, uh, you would. You know? But you know, at the end know. Uh, of this chapter... There's, mm -hmm. there's things to discuss about all that. Yeah. So. Okay, we'll we'll come back to that because there's much to say at the end. So, uh, okay, okay. Um, 
so all right, Neptune's talk about another prophecy. Okay, now now here's where we get into some more stuff about Poseidon. So they didn't find a poneglyph detailing this idea of the ancient weapon. In Skypea, they talked about Poseidon. Uh, down here, Neptune just says, Charlie had a prophecy. Every hundred years, Poseidon, the god of the sea, is reborn with a power to destroy the world, laying dormant inside a pure maiden. And Neptune's just like, yep, probably my daughter. My daughter is going to be My Poseidon. unborn daughter is going to be a, a weapon. You know, I'm just going to have to live with that. Yep. And that's all he knows. He doesn't know who she'll be or anything like that. And, you know, there's some funny jokes about, like, I'll give you some tips on fatherhood, says Odin to King Neptune. <laughs> They're both kings, effectively, so you know, that's, that's funny. Um, we see uh, Roger adorably playing with Charlie. He just asks her when Poseidon will be born. She just says, in 10 years. <laughs> and Neptune, yeah, as you said, she's like, well, there you have it. I'll have a daughter in 10 years. That's going to be my fucking Poseidon. Uh, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty sick. More it jokes about family stuff. It is very funny how he just, doesn't, um, he just doesn't care. Like, he doesn't care at all. He's totally fine with the with his destiny being laid out before him. Maybe that's a very kingly attitude to know that you have a burden to to execute certain things with your life. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, Rayleigh is like, yeah, we don't really give a shit about uh, that. We just want to know about the treasures. We're looking for poneglyphs here. We don't care about the weapons. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Roger's like, we'll be back and we'll steal your daughter. It'll be sick. No, no, he's saying. Heaven. He's saying like, um, oh, I won't. Have, right, I don't have enough time. To I don't have that, enough right. time to get the like. He was Rayleigh was <laughs> sort of like saying, you know, we don't care about that weapon, do we, Roger? And Roger's like, haha, mm -hmm. you you found me out. I kind of care about the weapon, but I'll be dead by then, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, right. And then, oh, we get a, a lovely little montage once again. Now, I believe these these like uh, sea serpent streams. I believe we saw the straw hats riding on those at one point. There's yes, this um, island cover. It seems to be raining lightning, which we famously saw Urouge appear at, offered um, uh, umbrellas by an old lady on that island. This looks like the same place. We see Roger freaking out. Looks hilarious. Absolutely love it. Uh, them finding a poneglyph somewhere on an island somewhere. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And they're all having and a big old gay bus in a, in a <laughs> hot spring, it looks like. Absolutely based. Great. Such chads. Such chads. Such a good and, time. Uh, Look at man, fucking Momonosuke spent a pretty good amount of time with these with these fucking Roger pirates, but I guess he was pretty young, so fair enough. Fair yeah. Enough. So then finally they get back to Wano and uh, Wano Kuni, and mm -hmm. uh, Toki came down with uh, a fever, and she, the d doctor man, says mm -hmm. uh, that in order for her to get better, she'll have to stop sailing. She'll have to get off at Wano and stay there. Um, Conveniently, they're right at Wano. Didn't yeah. that work out just perfect? Well, <laughs> it's not that she needs to go to Wano to be better, but she needs to right, just right. be they're on an anyway. island, and it just so happens. So, right. uh, Then it's like, you know, uh, everyone's saying, Odin, come back, you're finally home. Uh, all of his retainers are there. They've kept the place going mm -hmm. as, as much as they can. Um, but then Toki is like, no, he wanted to do the adventure. I won't... I won't like get in the way of his uh, of his dream and his promise to Roger and all this stuff. Um, so I will stay behind, and he and I will let him go and do the thing. And that's like that's that's cool. He 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 feels so much. Uh, actually, this is a this is a very interesting thing. So Odin in this moment, he he is home. He is fucking supposed to be daimyo of Kuri. And he's supposed to fucking be... Sh like, actually, Orochi is in charge right now. He's supposed to be Shogun of all of Wano right now. Um, but he's like, fuck that. Sorry, I gotta continue my journey. Travel with Roger. Because that's who Odin is. He's an adventurer. He doesn't want to fucking do that stuff. Well, it's, but it's not just that he doesn't want to go back. It's that he... It's that, like, he's the only one who can read the Poneglyphs. There's some reason for him to, to be, you know, going out there. Uh, well, that's true. I, I'm sure he feels a strong sense of purpose there. Um, that, that's that's fair. But also, like, let's not ignore. In this moment, there's there's a thing going on here. Odin, he feels he can't even look at Wano because if he turned around, he wouldn't be able to leave. Because one of the things that he can sense is that he we can see the factories in the background pouring out smog. We know that already Orochi is fucking up Wano right now. He may have already made an alliance with Kaido. We don't know yet. But things are going to shit in Wano, and Odin callously chooses to ignore that, to leave, and go continue the adventure instead of take care of, uh, of his country. Now, I can understand why, but that's pretty cold. That's pretty cold to the people of Wano. Yeah, it's like, 
I mean, that's why I was thinking it's like the duty he feels to help Roger, like get to the mm-hmm. the ending of the thing. Like, is it mostly callousness on on Odin's part that he just wants to adventure and he doesn't care? But like, he knows that if he goes back, he'll he care cares. too much to stay, and he won't be able to adventure anymore. And so I the- mean, at this point, like, there's no guarantees that, like, One Piece will, like, save the world or change anything no, for the it's, better. No, it's just fun. It's simply an adventure that, you know, he wants to do. But like, I'm, is he, sim- I'm very sympathetic, Is he still. Is he doing this for Toki? Is he do like, is this selfless in any way? Because it's it's It's, it's just hard. His, ma- his gay man crush on Roger. He wants to help Roger. I, I guess. I guess that quest. must be that. I don't know. Because there's, there's, there's ways to take... I mean, obviously, every, mm-hmm. all of his retainers call him scum. Uh, Roger also calls him scum. Uh, In a hilarious panel right yeah. there. It's great. <laughs> it's a great little face. Um, but, you know, he's he's in good spirits about it. But, like, mm-hmm. it's a difficult mm-hmm. situation. And, you know... I don't Even know, I don't Roger's know whether, calling him an asshole for doing this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether I can, like, fully go one way or the other on, like... A, saying that it's, it's complicated. Was okay. It's complicated. And it, it says right here on the page, as they sail away, as Odin callously leaves, four years later, a homecoming like this would not be waiting for me. Things are gonna get fucked while, like, while he's away. So well, that, was a, that was a choice with heavy consequences. Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to think. Odin lived in Wano for some time with Toki, didn't he? No, he met her after he left, remember? No, 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 I mean, like... Before, oh, before, like yes. the, the when castle he gets burns back. down, they do spend some time in that place. I, you know, I'd have to check the math. I forget how many years he spent with Whitebeard. It was a couple of years. Momonosuke was born relatively soon. Momonosuke is—is is he eight years old? I think he's eight years old, if I remember correctly. Um, no, he, so he I, can't be that old yet. No. Well, maybe. Well, he is. Let me see. No, I, I don't mean right now in the story. I mean like. At current One Piece, at like he's, uh, he's eight or nine or ten. Let me just uh, okay. He right. So he was in fact eight when he traveled forward in time, which is like at current One Piece time. So that means there's eight hours of time to burn before the time before he jumps through time twenty years. So I would guess, and it says right here, four years later, a homecoming like this would not be waiting for me. Um, so if we take that four years, and he's been with Whitebeard, I would guess two or three years. That leaves a wiggle room of maybe like one to two years that he spends back on Wano before he gets murdered by Orochi and Kaido, I would say. Hmm. Around there, anyway. Maybe less. Yeah, it's hard. It's I hard suspect to that say he might just show like... up and instantly get fucked and die uh, before he has a chance to do anything, but we'll see. Yeah, it's hard to say that Odin was a great man when, like, when the country needed him the most, he was just off mm-hmm. gallivanting. It's not like he thought to himself, like, you know, I'm going to throw off the tyranny of the world government by going on this epic quest to discover the truth, and that will, you know, set the whole world free. He was not thinking that way. He was just thinking, I have a promise to Roger, I have a promise to, like, my crewmates, I, you know, I made an obligation, and we can tell he wants to go on adventures. Um, These were his reasons for doing this. So... There's, you know, there's plenty of room to criticize. He knows that his country is going to shit a little bit. He's just like, uh, keep it together, lads. Yeah. Hope you all hold he, things down for me. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens when he comes back. I think he's going to die next chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, very likely. We'll see. I, I, give it, I give him two chapters, but we'll see. I, although they might, I don't skip around. We, we, we shall see. In any case, Roger continues to sail. Um, he's got the uh, fucking uh, Bibri card that leads to Zoe which is a big fucking elephant boy, and there he is. So as they approach, Odin is feeling very kooky, spooky, weirdo. There's a, there's a strange vibe coming from Zoe. Uh, and they climb up, and they meet the minks, and they say hello. And these guys are delighted to see the Kozgi clan. Uh, there, there's a duke. I don't know if we met this guy, Hichu Gishkan. I, I don't, don't know. think so. He must have been dead before. Probably died in the in the time. Um, Nekomamushi, of course, gave him a letter of introduction, so they're, they're all welcome, and all that good stuff happens. Um, and they're happy to see a Kozuki clan. Yay, everyone's there. Free hugs. Uh, and finally, they can all, both Odin and Roger can feel a big secret here, which I think is just the Poneglyph. I think that's what they're trying to get at. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was, Mm -hmm. it was maybe the elephant Kushina, but it, like, Zushina, Zushina, but you're right. 
the way that Momonosuke and Luffy were spoken to by it. That the, there is a notable there's a there's a thing going on here that's different from usual about Odin and Roger are, are like something weird is going on on this place and I think that it ties into Zushina perhaps like end game one piece prophecies and like that Zushina may be involved in maybe things like the destruction of the grand line uh you know cuz he's basically an ancient weapon he's the largest creature on the fucking planet and I think that he might be involved in like some end game one piece prophecy shit. So I, I that's what I think is being hinted at with these these weird feelings. Do you, do you think the ancient weapon is just Zushina like getting her big elephant feet and stomping on the on things? Like that's the big weapon. Sure did fuck up Jack and it was hilarious. Look, this is how a real elephant trunks slap. Um okay, in any case. So that's done and boom, there it is, the final poneglyph. Uh, we don't know where that other one was that's still mysterious, but we shall find well, hang out. On. But here it is. The fucking last road poneglyph what if, and the Kozuki clan. What if the fucking, like, that detour to East Blue was to find the road poneglyph? It, um, I think that that was before he mentioned the thing about the red poneglyphs. Hang on. Let me scroll no, up no, no. for one the, second. When he was with Whitebeard, he was talking about, he, he knows that there's these four red poneglyphs, road poneglyphs, that he needs. Yeah, and he has right, one from right. Big Mom, and he's looking for three more. And that is the only place mm -hmm. that is like a very large detour, and we don't see where he finds the mm. third one. You know, that would make a lot of sense, actually. That would make perfect sense if that was, in fact, where they went. To the East Blue, to... Okay, like, we do see those the Tequila Wolf guys dragging a block... I assume it's a construction block. Yeah. It could be a poneglyph. I don't I think, mean, I don't not... think it would be a poneglyph, but I think if yeah. if that's like a a decision they made to go there. Mm -hmm. you, like there maybe... must be some explanation for why they went. Or oh, it's a hack. Uh one of the two. <laughs> maybe maybe they're trying to get to an island that is like you can only get there if you build a huge bridge. Maybe, maybe. Uh, on a, that would make sense, though. And we we do actually see Roger and the gang. Like, I, I skipped this before, but we see them as they're wandering around. We see them, like, in a jungle, and they, like, just come upon a poneglyph. Excuse me. I'm not sure if it's implied or not that the Roger pirates, like, in an attempt to form, like, the Rio poneglyph themselves, if those guys tried to find, like, every poneglyph, because they had the time. They could have gone poneglyph hunting for, like, all of them, including the, the red poneglyphs. So maybe that was part of just their, like, find all the poneglyphs thing, or maybe that was a detour to find one of the red poneglyphs. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, any of these things could be the case. Um, in any case, so they have, they have their last red boy. Uh, the, uh, what's, Odin is finding out that the Kozuki clans are sworn brothers with the minks. That's pretty cool. And, uh, oh, who's this? A little future explody man, Pedro. Uh, as, we, as we learned long ago, had met Roger. And he was like, ooh, uh, I like you, but uh, it's not your time to shine, boy. You stay here and be a cool guy. Yeah, so and, this is just sort of like... Things. And one day, you'll, you'll explode. It'll be great. So this um, whole, like, flashback has been a lot of um, tying up a few loose ends and also introducing a few mm -hmm. things we didn't know. Like, this is one of those things that... It doesn't really fit in the chapter because it has nothing to do with anything, but it's just like, oh, remember him? He met Gold Roger, and this is what happened. It's a bit self-indulgence. We, we didn't need this moment. Pedro's not a very important character, but he's like a martyr. He died with the straw hats. I mean, okay, fair enough. Uh, eh, eh, whatever. Th this is one of those moments that feels a bit like, yeah, not to be an asshole, but like, you're kind of wasting our time, Oda. Like, I don't care about, we, we've seen the flashback already where Pedro met Roger. We don't need to devote screen time to this, but oh, it's, it's nice, it's nice, whatever. Um, so there you go. And, uh, oh, oh, I bet this is because you know how fucking Pedro's crew was called, like, the Knox Pirates? Because they were the Night Pirates looking for the Dawn. Dude, he was so inspired by Gold Roger with, like, Dawn and uh, whatever. Who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, uh, that, what that should have been is just a nice, subtle background detail. It did not need much focus. Uh, okay, in any case, they're done with Zoe. They have all the road poneglyphs. It's time to fucking go to the last island. Uh, let's get to it, lads. Um, and so they're on some unknown island. It doesn't look familiar to me, so I'm not sure what it is. We hear Hacken and Coffin from the bathroom. 
And uh, Shanks is knocking, Roger, what's going on? And Roger comes out. So clearly they're implying that Roger's status is deteriorating. He's, uh, he's, not, he's barely hanging on to, uh, to life at this point. But uh, he's ready to fucking go because the boys have figured out where they're headed. And they are on their way to the final island. So up to this point, I, I had, had always been wondering, like, if it made sense. I was, I was kind of worried that, like, it wouldn't make sense how, like, Big Mom or Kaido or the world government or anybody, like, wasn't able to get to the final island. Um, because we know now that you can get to Lodestar. Anybody can get to Lodestar. If you follow the, the log pose, that's fine. But, and now we've, we've been, you know, found out in, you know, most time skip that you need the, the road poneglyphs or the, you need the red poneglyphs, the four of them. And like, those are just divided up among factions. And so the thing Roger not, did. Are they not actually yeah. called the road poneglyphs? N- n- they are called, I don't think they have a name. I think they're I just they called, called the road poneglyphs. Like they, they show you the road to the thing. They are, in fact, yeah, you, okay, you're right. You're sorry. You're right. It is the road. I was confusing with the Rio Poneglyph, which is oh, yeah. the other thing. You're, you're right. So the, the four road Poneglyphs. You're right. Um, and I was so I'd been wondering, like, okay, what's Oda going to show as like the barrier that keeps you from getting there? Basi- we're not. It sure seems the case at this point that like you, once you just have the instructions, you are able to somehow do it. Now, of course, the thing about the Grand Line is when you are sailing the Grand Line, you rely upon the log pose because every other form of navigation fails. This is like, this has been the reason why people have difficulty traversing the Grand Line. So like for Oda to just, for Oda to just like come up with something else would be perhaps rather disappointing. But we know that the log pose stops at, uh, at uh, Lode Star Island. And it looks like these guys, we see them sitting around a map, they're doing something. They must, there must be some kind of trick that one can use when some sailing. Some kind of super navigation uh, mathematics. Mm. Maybe, something maybe like that. Maybe like, like triangulating a bunch of log poses. I mean, I have, I have questions, though. Because like, we, we know that the, the Grand Line is a straight line around the Earth. Why couldn't one use, perhaps, I mean, just for example, star charting. You like, okay, where's the North Star? Okay, wherever the North Star is, you can now sail in a direction, and you know that if you just keep going that way, you'll be going in a straight line, which is all that the Grand Line is. You just sail, sail in a straight line. Maybe that's, like, unreliable, well, and you'll bump the, into the comm belt if you fuck well, up even a little bit. I, or... I think it's it's more that, like, mm-hmm. the Grand Line is a straight line, yeah. but it's a very, very, very wide straight line. Like, True. Like, you couldn't possibly hope to like like mow the lawn and go all the way and then turn mm. around and go all the way back and find the island that way it would take decades of, of sailing mm. that's that's true that's true so i guess you mean that you just need more precise and start well here's a here's a suggestion is it possible to what if you just didn't care about the island itself you just wanted to sail past it get to the other side of reverse mountain and then you know you've done it you've you've made it all the way around you missed the last island but you know you got to uh, <laughs> fucking but, I the mean, thing. I, I mean, the whole point is that they want to see the treasure buried on X marks the spot. It's the the famous pirate thingy. Well, the, was the there ro- even there's four a famous treasure? The, the, was there the even a I famous treasure? The way I imagine treasure it. known. Uh, okay, okay. Well, go on, Roger go on. knows there's a treasure left by Joy Boy. Um, I think. I don't think he, he knows that he talks yet. About, he talks about it, but I. Th- well, I, I think Lodestar Island. It implies the existence of the of the red poneglyphs, I think, that hints at something big there. So yeah. I, I think you're right about that, yeah. But, like, uh, the way I imagined it was the, there are four mm-hmm. road poneglyphs. They're red, and usually, you know, just like pop culture, the X mm-hmm. marks the spot is a cross mm-hmm. that's drawn in red uh, on a pirate map. And so mm-hmm. I think in a roundabout way, that's the basic gist is, like, each four points where they intersect is the island. The only thing... I don't I'm, even know if it's that literal, but, I mean, m- maybe it is. Maybe I, f- it is. I feel like it's, it's just a funny, cool thing that Odo would be like, what if X marks the spot was literally the, the thing? Because it's the most obvious, well, that's the fine basic with me. pirate thing. Uh, the, the only yeah. question I have is, like, why... Because we can, we can see Shanks is a lot older here, and we knew that Odin, four years after he left Wait, Toki, he can't be much older. He only had one year to live. He can't be that much older. Well... Well, look, um, well, what did he say? What did Odin say? Like, 
when he left Wano, mm-hmm. it would be four years. I don't know. I mean, how old? Well, Shanks I mean, looks o- a Odin, lot older. Odin, I think, is just implying that, like, it, like, sure, it's only one year until, like, Roger has left to live. But Odin probably just won't get back to Wano for several years after that point, I would think. Yeah, maybe. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you're probably right. It's just sort of weird that Shanks mm-hmm. is more than a year older in this one section. Like, I just think he's drawn he's, a little differently, as sometimes happens. It, it's, I mean, yeah, but like, he seems like he's pretty much the same throughout mm-hmm. um, the whole experience with Odin ever since he joins the crew. And then suddenly you know, maybe he's a lot older. maybe more time did pass. I'm not, like, they haven't established that, like, it has, in fact, been less than a year. Maybe there's a thing with, like, Rogers, like, past his expiration date, but he's, like, still just hanging in there for the last... Maybe it's been, like, two years, and he's just hanging in there, because we see him hacking and coughing. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that is being implied. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not totally but sure. But if it is being implied, I'm just wondering why, after mm-hmm. they have all four poneglyphs, does it take so long to find out where the destination is? Well, this thing about, okay, so they, they got the road poneglyphs at Zoe, so they had all the information there. But we see Roger at some unknown harbor, so obviously they traveled somewhere. Roger walks out and says, have you figured out our destination yet? My guess is that there's some process of, like, problem solving or charting. Like, there's some task to be solved, like, intellectually or, like, problem solving. Even if it's just, like, navigating a route before you can, like, actually start heading there. Otherwise, I mean, because like we know, like it's so hard to sail on the Grand Line unless you have a log pose. It's the only reliable navigation. It's got, it's got to be something to do with that. Uh, I, I would think. I don't know. Uh, I'm doing my best here. You know. All right. Right after that, maybe they're not even talking about going to Raftel. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is after they've been to Raftel, and this is like, have you figured out our destination? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. That's and then not. The- Correct. And then he's, like, gonna go some... Like, I don't know, maybe? That's No, that's definitely not true, because we see... I mean, the next panel is we see... I mean, unless it's out of order, but, I mean, it, why would it be? It's we see Buggy suddenly has a fever and has to be left behind on an island. And, uh, and Shanks also decides to stay back with him, just out of the kindness of his heart, I guess, and is like, it's all right, we'll go together one day, which is really sweet. Um, but, like, so they, they confirmed did not go to Raftel. Uh, Shanks and Buggy, so uh, those two. And apparently, the out. you'll die if you go to this th- th- that island disease is a real disease. Usopp well, was not Gib. lying. Okay, the whole see time. that's the epic meme going around. I I myself personally double checked the Japanese translation. There is no mention of this. You'll die if you go to that island disease. This is not an epic Usopp reference. The translator on a, uh, just like some guy inserted this as a joke. And you know that the wiki boys are going crazy. They're shooting their loads in their pants about like, oh my God, Usopp's prophecies always come true. It's literally made up. It's not, this was not in the text. It was an, a joke inserted hmm. by an English translator. Okay. Uh, I did so think just it was a bit stupid because it's like, why would a disease be called that? Well, I mean, it would, it, if Oda wanted to do that, it would be a funny joke because it's so ridiculous and that'd be fine. But it is in fact not real. He just got a fever. But yeah, man, but like this how, is how very do, sad. But it is like, like how would you catch a disease like that? Like at first, I um, thought Buggy was just nervous and he didn't want to go. Uh, yeah, it is. It is rather confusing here. But uh, that he just got a fever and it was complete chance. What, what this actually is is a little bit of I know it never happens in the series, but a little bit of convenient storytelling to keep Buggy and Shanks, I think, off of Raftel for purposes of the narrative. Later, I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing, um, but we don't know. We we just don't know. So so that's the situation with those two. But it's really sad. Buggy is like begging to go. He's like so. He seems really distraught that he won't get to go with the rest of the crew. And Shanks, just out of the kindness of his heart, like offers to stay behind. Um, it's it's just it's just fucked up. It's just fucked up. But there's no shenanigans going on here. He just got sick and they left him behind. Yeah, and then. Uh, big news. Big news, mm-hmm. everyone. The biggest news. Gold Rogers finally unanswered the, uh, answered the unanswered mystery of the world. He conquered the Grand Line, and uh, he's the biggest guy. He's the king of the pirates. He did it. He did it. And, um, I don't uh, know in own. what way he proves any of this. I guess he just says it. 
I because I know we, we none of the know. information gets know. out to anyone because no one knows what it is except him. I mean, maybe perhaps Gold Roger came over the other side of um, like of um, uh, the of fucking Reverse Mountain, and people like observed that. And the only way you could do that would be to go all the way around. Um, so, like, I, I think that there are some ways that people would be able to verify that he had done it. Um, I'll be happy to, you know, wait for clarification on exactly how, but I'm not, I'm not too beat up by, uh, by that being a yeah. little bit ambiguous right now. So for the past few panels, uh, Odin mm-hmm. has been writing in his memoirs, and that's the narration we've been getting. Um, mm-hmm. and he's like, they learned everything about the Void Century, the meaning of the D, the ancient weapons, and, uh, Indeed. learned, yes, I at least learned that Wano had connected the world with the world in the past. And so he's learning so all I, these I, things. I wonder... If this is implying that, uh, you know, that they had collected the Rio Poneglyphs, which is to say all the Poneglyphs, in order to solve all these things. Cause the one thing I'll say about this is just, like, the Roger, we see, with his, like, 13-year journey back from Lodestar Island to go explore and, like, do all the, to find the Poneglyphs, um, like, he had way more of an opportunity to find everything and to spend lots of time discovering information than, like, Luffy and the gang is having. And so some people... I, this, some people criticize Oda or, like, Luffy for, like, his journey is so much easier than than Roger's was, which is true. It's far more straightforward. I, I just think... It, I'm not even, like, defending it or anything. It is what it is. But it's just that, like, like, Luffy and his gang are just using the information gathered by the people who came before them uh, in order to kind of, like, to not redo the work that, like, Roger and the gang did. Like, they just met Nekomamushi and Inugarashi in Zo who happened to have the information about the road poneglyphs and, you know, the uh, where to other, get the other ones from Big Mom and et cetera, et cetera. So, like, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious if when we get to the end of One Piece, if, like, our crew, like, Robin, will have to have, like, collected poneglyph information from other people to understand everything, or if just all the important information is just on that last island. I don't know. I'll be I'll be I, curious to see. I feel like it might just be on the last island. It would be mm-hmm. a bit of a I mean, maybe there could be a month. Then what is the real thing. Poneglyph then? I mean, is it just the fucking Poneglyph at the end? I see that's the I think it might have changed a little bit. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't it know. doesn't really matter. Uh, who Not cares? Important. We don't know anything. We're stupid. <laughs> hey guys, but, I mean, we forget Jesus. everything. Odin Odin is fully clarifying. They know what the Void Century is. They, yes, know, they know what D the means. Things. They know all about the ancient weapons. They know it all. And Gold Roger saw it all on that island. Yeah, and, and what did he do when he saw it all in front of his eyes? He laughed he a give? big fucking laugh. He lamoured. Uh, and he everyone sure else did. did as well. Including Odin, Scopper Gaban, Silver's Rayleigh, Crocus, that fish guy. The whole crew. They just kecked and lamoured the day away until the point where tears started pouring out of their eyes when they learned the truth. And f- and this is, first of all, amazing panel of Roger lamoing yeah. in a big way. That's a, that's a big laugh. That's a big hee-hee. Oh, and look, it, like, okay, I've got a lot to say about this panel, but, like, there's tears in his eyes. This is such, like, a good-natured big smile. It's not like... Okay, okay, we'll, we'll get back to this. But we see Roger says, Joy Boy... I really wish I had been born in the same era as you. You left behind such an unbelievable treasure. What a funny story. Okay, we now know that it was Joy Boy who left behind a treasure at the final island. So Joy Boy did not just have involvement with the ancient, with like Poseidon and uh, the Fishman Kingdom. This is a big deal. We now know Joy Boy is actually a far more important character than we knew before. He's like. He's probably like everything related to the ancient kingdom, and he was at fucking the last island. Uh, okay, big deal. And funny story. And okay, we'll get to this. And now, hey guys, so how about we name that last island no one has arrived at yet in the last 800 years? This laugh tale. Now, I've got a couple things to say about the name of the final island, Laugh Tale. So. We, I think we've discussed on the show, we knew that the, fi- that the last island, which has been called Raftel by translators for, a, for many, many years. Since we first heard of it, I don't know, like before the time skip sometime. I think maybe uh, like when Luffy and Garp were hanging out after uh, Annie's Lobby or whatever. I don't know. Um, but we didn't know 
this exact, uh, like, English translation being Laugh Tale. The place where that was found out was the recent movie, uh, what's that called? Uh, not Strong World. Whatever the recent one was, with, with Bullet, who was uh, on Roger's crew. Gold World? It wasn't the gold one. It's the one that came after that. I don't care. I, I hate the movies. Super and, Mario and, and 3. That's the one. And let me just, this is, this moment, okay, Roger laughing, right? Everything about this moment feels like a big, epic moment of a revelation. Roger is deciding to name this island that no one had named before this point. He names it Laugh Tale in this moment, which we all knew was Laugh Tale. A fucking movie comes along, an, a spin-off, totally inconsequential, about characters nobody gives a shit, comes along, and that's the thing, because the name Laugh Tale was on a, um, I looked this up on the wiki, I didn't see the movie. The name of the island was on the eternal pose that was, like, being auctioned off to, like, the winner of the Pirate Expo, or whatever the fuck it was. It's like a big fighting, I don't know, whatever the fuck it was. Um, and, and, like, because, like, Bullet, I think, had been there before was the idea, and so he made an eternal pose of it or something. Um, I don't Wait, even know if that... it was legit. I did not watch the movie, okay. so I don't, I don't know. I, I could imagine the movie is about it being a sham. Um... I, it may, maybe it is, but the name of the island was correct, was obviously proved correct. And and it, I, I have many things to say about this. I'd like to rewind everyone's clock back to, there's a, well, first of all, th there was a, an editor had said recently in One Piece that I believe it was after the movie came out. I, and I forget where it is, but I found this on the wiki somewhere. I think it's on like the wiki page for Raftel, or for Laugh Tale, um, that the editors of One Piece had known for many, many years the name of the island, Raftel, being actually Laugh Tale. It is, it is worth noting that despite them knowing for many, many years, and us just using this word Raft Tale, there was never any clarification on any books, on any media whatsoever, until this movie that came out this year, just like a couple months ago before this page, this chapter, at the end of the, of the fucking year, at the end of the decade. Uh, big moment, big moment. They, we see them on the fucking island. This is insanity. This is pure madness. Um, it had never been revealed, the meaning of that name. And it, you should consider, consider the well, reality of Japanese to English translations. I mean, yeah, I'm, like, well, surely, here's, here's surely Laugh Tale has been, like, revealed already because they've said it. It's just that it's written down in English as Raft Tale. No, it, that, well, that's my exact point. It has never been revealed. It, the only place it was ever said, as Laugh Tale specifically, was the movie that came out, like, this year, a couple of months ago, no, no, before but this But that's chapter. in English, right? What about in Japanese? Hasn't it been okay. the same thing in Japanese? Great point, and that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm getting at. It's that um, it, it is written as, uh, like, Rafuteru in Japanese, using katakana. In katakana, it's like meaningless sounds that didn't mean anything. That's why everybody called it Raftel until it was proved to be like no one in the world knew that the actual meaning was Laugh Tale except the actual people working on One Piece. And we just all thought it was Raftel. Like no one understood. And in Japanese, it doesn't make any sense. I actually, I should look up the Japanese translation of this shit. But like there, there's something else worth noting. In the fucking song that we actually see in this very chapter, Bink's fucking sake, in Bink's sake, there is a line about a uh, about a never-ending, wandering, funny tale. Right, it's the final line in the series or in the song before the final yo ho hos, which is a uh, hatenashi, atenashi, warai banashi, warai banashi. Trend, it, like the kanji is literally laugh story, laugh tale. It just it is that. So so here's what I'm getting at. There were subtle hints all along as to like what the meaning of Laugh Tale or of Raft Tale actually was. It was never confirmed. I feel like this moment was meant to be the big reveal of the actual name of the island that wasn't was not confirmed in Japanese. It was just meaningless sounds um, that was hinted around. Like I think that Bing Sake was intentionally designed to have this line. That would like it's the it's the last word. It is literally the last word in uh, uh, in Bing Sake. Everything makes me think this was intended to be like a reveal, but a fucking piece of shit asshole retarded movie that has nothing to do with real One Piece comes along and spoils it, which cheapens this reveal. And my point is that I'm annoyed by that. I'm not trying to make a giant screed. I'm just annoyed that it undercuts the reveal in this chapter. 
which I feel was the real intent here, and I wish I hadn't heard about it, and that that movie just came out afterward, or not at all. I would have much preferred that. Well, I mean, Um, I think I had heard the Laugh Tale thing, and I was like, really? But that doesn't really make this less impactful. I think this is really cool. Um, uh, well, look, especially many since great about this, the, the, especially mm-hmm. since like the things that are, like immediately f- f- fill my mind is like, what if it's all completely unimportant bullshit, like a big meme, like there's just a dad boy or some old meme. It's like, haha, that's really funny. Look, look, I, I'm just trying to separate. Uh, we can. I'm happy to discuss the actual meaning of this reveal and like the la- like what this all means. I'm just saying the name was spoiled, and I just wish it hadn't been. That's that's all I'm saying about that. Okay. Moving on from that, though, about it, the the laugh and all this, the implications of this are are fascinating. Um, yeah. And, I mean, you got to think back to, like, what have we heard about One Piece so far? Whitebeard did his big thing. He knows what One Piece is. He was told by Roger after he, uh, you know, after he fucking found One Piece, all this shit. Um, he was told that uh, it exists and what it is. And Whitebeard just clarified at Marine Fort, at the big war, one Piece exists. That's all he said. But he all, he also in the I looked this up. I I, I reread this. He, uh, he just says that like its reveal will like throw the world into chaos and like kick off like the biggest war the world's ever seen. Thing. So like it's got to be something. And he he refers to it that way. And Roger and his crew laugh at whatever that thing is. So I have thoughts. But what what do you think? Gabe? What do you think about well, that? Well, I mean, my first thought is. Mm-hmm. It's funny because it's obviously unexpected. They didn't get what they mm-hmm. were expecting. Maybe the if they were looking, comedy. they were they were looking for treasure and they found mm-hmm. whatever else it could be. Um, he says it's a funny story. Um, Indeed, I think like trying to be serious about it. I think mm-hmm. it it might be. Uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to say. Like, what mm-hmm. would be funny to Roger and everyone? Like, I have a guess. The, 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 I have a guess. Yeah, my guess would be like everything's pointless and uh, just have fun. And the the de- like there was nothing there, and the destin the journey was the the whole thing. And it's like haha. But like, <laughs> I think there's a bit more to it. I think there has yeah, to be. There or has to be Oda something. Either either Whitebeard was just playing into the meme when he said it would cause a war because everyone's expecting it to be something incredibly important, and it's nothing. And it's mm-hmm. like yeah, that is that would be pretty funny if I said that, and he said it, and he was like, ah, "Oh my deathbed, I'll I'll, well, I'll, you I'll know, really wind him up." Like, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, uh, th- obviously, there's nuances to it. I- I've seen some people out there looking at this panel, and being like, "Oh my god, I regret reading One Piece because this proves." That, like, the journey was for nothing. First of all, it doesn't prove anything. This does not prove anything definitively. Uh, but that, like, it's it's got to be something like you were saying. Like, like this is like a Joker-esque moment where, like, it's all meaningless. The world isn't a tragedy. It's a comedy. And uh, and this is him, you know, laughing at that. But I'm just, I'm considering all the factors here. Considering Whitebeard's reaction to it. And, like, saying that, like, its revelation will change the world forever. And the fact that Gold Roger is la- Gold Roger and his whole crew are laughing uproariously at this. Like, what does that mean? What I think it means. God, this is such a good meme t- template. Like, you have know, like a fantastic. blank image, and then this like, and then he laughed, and everyone someone, laughed. Please make. I saw someone requesting this. They didn't. I didn't see a good job on a of like. Please make an edit of this where his mouth is like like close the mouth up to the bomb right under his nose. Like close the mouth and have him staring intently at the screen, and it says he did not laugh. And you know, just have him looking directly at us, tight lipped, <laughs> unamused by what he saw here today. Uh, please do that. I would. Well, love I'm that. thinking Maybe of I'll do more it. just like like if there's a blank image of like, and then they saw the thing. It's like a podium. And then following image is him laughing. And you could just put fucking anything on there and it would be funny. Well, that, that's definitely true. It's absolutely true. Um, and I've seen them. I've seen, um, I've just seen like the one he raft, you know, he's a, <laughs> he's a Japanese pirate. He did a big raft. Um, I've also seen, oh, just XD, XD in the little box there. He, he uh, is doing a, a pretty, pretty <laughs> good XD. He really is. That's a big, oh, and I've seen, um, of course, it's coming out of the discussion uh, or it's coming out again. People are being like, guys, what do you think D means? Um, how about 
colon D? How about X D? Could this be the will of D? Laughing at it <laughs> yeah, all? Just a, mm-hmm. just a little piece of paper with X D on it, and it's like uh, X D every time <laughs> I see it. Wait, you know how it's it's D with a period? That's actually a mistranslation. You put that period before the D, and you double it vertically, then you get a big colon D epic laugh. Um, I mean, you know, D could be devil still, the opposite of the gods that are the Ten Ribito. Could be, I don't know, could be. I heard X-D someone laugh. say that know. D was democracy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, that'd be very dumb, <laughs> but it's possible. Uh, okay, here's here's what I think. I'll tell you what I think. Um, like, uh, D I is think for some dinner. people look to, to your to your average like. Bleach ended, so I read One Piece now. Naruto ended, so I read One Piece now. Fucking Boku no Hero Academia, dumbass piece of shit reader. They probably won't appreciate nuance. And they'll, like, they could be just like, oh, it's not like a giant pile of treasure. It's not a gun that will blow up the fucking planet. So it sucks. Um, there's going to be people who are disappointed one day. But I'll tell you what I think. Considering his reaction, what I think is. It's something like, it's, a, it's very likely a story, information from Joy Boy, right? What I think that information is, is something simple, but very important and profound. I suspect it's going to be something like Joy Boy's statement that, like, the world order as you know it is a joke. Like, Gold Roger and everyone who exists now was born into a world where it was just a matter of fact that the world is controlled by the world government. The Tenryubito are the gods of the world. You know, kings rule their countries. Uh, the, the marines enforce the laws. The marines are, like, half the fucking world population. And if you want to be free, all you can do is break away from that system and be a pirate where you'll be hunted and try, they'll try to kill you, like... At any cost. Like, you, you are completely outside the system if you do that. The stakes are incredibly high. But for some people, they just can't live under that system. It's like fucking Demolition Man. They can't live under that system. They gotta be free, so they do that. I think what Joy Boy is saying is he's telling them a story about how the world used to be. About how the Tenryubito are just people. They're just people like you. No one has any authority over you. Everyone is meant to be free. Everyone's, like, equal. There's no... The, 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 like, the structure of the world that we were born into. Joy Boy was there when the Tenryubito seized power. and beca- But they were just people. They were just the kings of some countries. They were just a bunch of fuckboys. They just took over. And the entire social order that exists is a complete joke. And, th- yeah, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. But it's not hilarious in, like, a joker, just let the world burn kind of way. You can look at it that way. But look at the joy on Roger's face. This is a happy man. He's happy to have discovered this because what I think Roger realizes is that he's out of time. He's going to die. But he knows that if he got here, other people can get here too. And when the word of this gets out, just the Roger crew seeing this isn't enough. He needs people to see this because as Whitebeard said, yes, it's a big joke. But when Whitebeard says that this information will set the world on fire and, and change the world, it's because... If they had, the people of the world are just going along as if the Tenryubito deserve their authority. I, if the whole world decided this isn't right, they don't deserve to control us. We're not going to, you know, uh, abide by slavery. We're not going to abide by, like, the discrimination, the fucked up shit they do to us, their control over us. They would not be able to hold their power. So I think it's a story about how the current world order is meaningless, is a joke, deserves to be undermined. Roger finds that hilarious. Whitebeard finds that to be like an inspirational thing. And when the world gets out, there will be a giant war because the people will have proof or know for sure that yeah. the world government should not be in charge and that they're going to take back control of their own lives, which to some is hilarious. To some is probably tragic. And uh, it just it's, speaks um... to the larger themes of One Piece about personal autonomy, about personal freedom. And not being controlled by, like, an evil conglomerate world government that just says that they know what's best for you. And just says that we deserve to be in control because we're the smartest. Uh, Nah, fuck that. It's about a fucking boy with a straw hat that just matters to him. It's not about what the man tells him he should do with his fucking life. That's what I think. Yeah, I I like that. Like, it definitely feels like it's That feels satisfying to me. I'd be happy with that. I am Mm -hmm. a little confused as to why... If this mm-hmm. information is 
you know, is good to spread, mm-hmm. why it, like, the Void Century information has not been spread since they found it out. I've got it, a guess for that. I was thinking about that. And I, I think it's that Roger, Roger, he just didn't have enough time. And I think well, what he would have wanted do. to do with his life. Well, th- think about what did Roger choose to do with the very little time he had left? He chose to die to inspire a whole new generation to become pirates for this exact purpose to get them here. Because I think if Roger had time, mm-hmm. he, he, I mean, you know, he's not, he's not a revolutionary. Oh, yeah, but he you is know, a pirate. It's, it's like yeah. the, the, the only people who could, like, properly spread this message or, like, the people who deserve to know are the people who Indeed. try their, de- their best to get here and to, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's sort of like, it's gatekeeping, but it's, hmm. I do I wonder, Roger though, like, knew, if, if they tried to spread the information before they were ready and before more people, like, had the knowledge, they would just be quashed and, like, their, their thing would, like, not work out. So he probably just told his crew, like, hey, guys, you're like, you're like 30 dudes. This is not enough to, like, change the world. We need everybody, which means I'm going to inspire the whole world with my death. And you guys just lay low. The time will come when more people have made it. When we, like, someone who's, like, who's like me, who's, like, a a powerful figure who people respect, uh, they'll listen to, you know, whoever that captain is one day, and that guy will start a fire, and he'll be there to lead the charge. Because I can't, because I'm about to fucking die. So, uh... It it reminds me a little bit of, um... Uh, about the like the, the idea that the world government is all a sham and it's just it, you know some guy started it as a bet and then it got out of control or something. Um, well, I think they seized control, but I see your point. Yeah, it's arbitrary. Yeah, it's like some small petty argument. It sort of reminds me of that one Avatar episode where mm-hmm. uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, where um, there are these two like clans and they have this this tale of uh, you know playing the football thing. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. With the, the sacred orbs. And then Aang reveals that, oh, I know those guys. They were just kids playing with a football. And it's mm-hmm. like, it sort of gets rid of all the majesty of the, of the thing that, you know, legends are built exactly. up over time. They become more like ridiculous that... than they actually were. And, and once that, that once the world government and the Tenyu Bito are like, mm-hmm. the, the, the knowledge of them is truly known and the Void Century, re- you know, it's not that there are secrets um, that are like, you know, important uh, mm-hmm. politically or like militarily. It's just sort of like this is a really embarrassing story that they don't want anybody to know about because it's really Why funny. Why has like well, nobody you know, nobody I, can pay attention to a government that is so funny that they can't help but laugh? You at uh, them. you guys like you guys like SpongeBob. Remember that one where uh, like the secret box and inside the secret box was an embarrassing Christmas photo of in this case Eem Sama from the <laughs> world government. And he has to keep it secret no matter what. If people knew, they wouldn't respect the government anymore. Uh, Literally, that's also is the possible. Case. I, I, it's effectively that, but like some people would maybe find that unsatisfying. But like you, you just like okay, well think there, about this. The Why thing is, is one piece the, there is okay, still. Um, the issue of, like, weapons of mass destruction and all Honestly, of this. Honestly, w- given this chapter, I think that, like, things like Pluton are not going to be important. I think it's all going to be about uh, Shirahoshi being Poseidon, using the Sea Kings to destroy the Red Line, and Zushina as well. I honestly think those are going to be the things. And that's enough. That's enough to get the job done, I think. Like, uh, th- those two factors. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's, it's still, like, it's not like... Um, the laughter alone will stop the world government, you know. They no, still oh, have a I, lot of okay. power, like, physically. You're right, but this is it. This is the thing. Okay, think about this. Why has One Piece been so obsessed about spreading news via newspapers for, like, almost the entirety of One Piece? What is the point of making a whole narrative about how a bunch of characters are traveling around the world and we cut to just random citizens of the One Piece world, going about their business, but reading about Luffy and the gang. What is the point of that? Yes, there's a point to just show Luffy's notoriety, but I think the real point is building to this idea that, like, that mechanism, maybe Big News Morgans, uh, like the newspaper, like the reputation of these pirates, all of that will matter when it comes down to Luffy has a fucking announcement to make that the world government is invalid for XYZ reason that he knows... It's all a big fucking joke. He has proof of it or whatever. And then the whole world is going to rise up and say, fuck the world government. We don't want to be ruled by them anymore. We want to be free and do our own shit. Yeah. You people don't own us. 
That's it, it what I think. It, One with, the, with the introduction of big news, Morgan's being a non-government affiliated yes. uh, system. Indeed. Uh, very Indeed. much leads to the idea that once, because Luffy has all these allies, all these kingdom people who uh, mm-hmm. you know agree with him. Everybody he's met on his journey uh, will be like buddy buddies with him. They right. will agree if Luffy does a thing in the news and it gets spread by Big News Morgans, who loves big news. Okay, oh, wait, sorry. I Stay can definitely. I gotta step away for one second. I'm sorry. One second. Oh, it's oh, gotta step away for one second. Okay, I'm sorry. Go on. Uh, what, what what was that? It was a dog. I had to let Michelle in. She was she was out. And she just got home. I had to unlock the door. Okay. Um, but yeah, like big, uh, big news, Morgans will you know revel in the, in, in the chance to to mm-hmm. do this because he's not you know it, it early on nobody was really sure that the the news was uh, independent, so to speak. Although it isn't exactly right. independent, it does like take bribes and things as we've seen mm-hmm. but um i think like generally it's it's he would love this shit he would <laughs> he, he would, would love, love he would love to spread the news and a lot of people would love to hear it i just mm-hmm. wonder though yeah. how like different the situation is with roger like does roger not have a lot of allies and friends could it not have worked that's you know that's that's a fair question i think that we will definitely learn more about why he didn't do it like again i could all be wrong about this this is just what i like i'm painting a theory that i think works yeah. makes sense and fits all the parameters it could be totally different but i, I think that I th- we will learn why i think it's it's definitely on. one of those things maybe it's it's like he didn't want to do it because he felt like the world wasn't ready and he wanted to start the the, the piracy so that the world could maybe. become more ready um possible i mean it's definitely a thing that luffy is doing more than roger did um in, That's true. In, Luffy's in the changing sense, the world wherever he goes. Yeah, he's liberating kingdoms here and there. He's yeah. he's he's made Fishman Island. He might destroy Fishman, Fishman Island. He might use the They'll weapons thank him to for do it. Things. It'll be great. Um, he's going to open Wano in the a thing that nobody else has done, been able to. Uh, not so, for that eight hundred years. Not You're for right. Roger years, didn't so do like, that. So Luffy is going to be. Most likely, Luffy's the one very much, who does. he's building on the legacy of Gold Roger, which is, I think is exactly what Gold Roger wanted. He wanted to, and that's the whole point yeah. of the Golden Age of Piracy that he started for this ex- exact purpose to change the world with other and people. And he, like he knows, he, I mean, he knows he has a son out there, um, or like uh, a pregnant wife. He's kind a pregnant of a deadbeat wife. dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has a pregnant wife, and he knows that maybe his son could do it. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe might be thinking of that. Uh, yeah. Well, Gabe, as, as Metal Gear Solid 2 famously said, even if your son tragically dies with a lava fist through the chest, you know what you can still pass down to all the other people in the world? The memes. The memes, Gib. I don't and remember so he that did. part. Oh, that happened. Trust me. I don't me. remember when he <laughs> said that exact line. Okay, that's a literal quote from Solid Snake. The memes that we have to pass down are what people will take, like, because they're, they're clones and they can't reproduce. He's like, but we can pass down the memes, right? We can pass down so many fucking memes. Uh, look at this troll face. Haha, <laughs> yes. Fuck the... Oh, it's just a big troll face. That's what it <laughs> is. Epic troll on a slab, on a poneglyph. Oh, by the way, I haven't really taken much time to say. Looking... I, I, was, trying to, I was trying to say this before, but I just want to focus again on... Blackbeard... Or, or, uh, Roger here could be, like, sad or mad. It gives me so much happiness that, like, this is the last image we see... This fucking decade of One Piece, we close it out with just, he's so much joy. So much joy. So he, much joy, Him and his so whole crew, boy. they choose to interpret it in a, in a happy way, in a positive way. Roger's on death's door. He's dying day by day. The whole crew, so much camaraderie. They did it, man. They won. They're not sad. They just think this shit's fucking hilarious. And what a, what a, what a, it just makes me happy. It just makes me yeah. so happy to see that. I love these guys. And, and you know, there's, there, I'm seeing this... more crewmen who are like popping up regularly. I, I want to know what those guys are up to. Where are they at? Where are they at? Yeah. Very curious. I, uh, 
I really I really like the implications of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it's 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 mostly probably what you said. I I I get why some people are like scared that it's that people are I, like I don't know it's why literally the laughs scared. we like, had along could, the way. Could you no. possibly imagine something that could be like what would it be if it was a thing? Okay, Loads Oda has gold? denied this no. many times. Good question. Oda has denied it many times, but let's assume he's a hack or was lying or whatever. Uh, okay, like it could literally be like let's say it's literally like a joke that Joy Boy was just like it's the friends you made along the way, it's the laughs you had along the way. Okay, the, the thing is, that doesn't make sense for that to be the message. It could be like, maybe it's a joke that like on its surface level looks like something like that, but when you think about it a little bit deeper, like actually has some meaning that, you know, because let's not forget, when the Straw Hats met Rayleigh, they said that like, they said to Robin, when Robin asked about it, like, hey, you know, Robin, you and your boys might interpret things differently. Like you're a scholar, Robin, you know the history. We're a bunch of fucking asshole pirates. We don't know shit you might interpret things very differently from how we interpret it, which I think is exactly what we're seeing with, like, Roger here laughing. Whitebeard was, like, serious about it. Um, Like, that you can take the same information and interpret it differently. I, uh, but to to answer your question, though, it's just, like, yes, it's possible that it's, like, it's nothing. It's, like, the journey was the fun. Like, that's what everyone fears. But Oda has repeatedly denied that's what it is he's like one piece is a tangible thing and i I think the thing that i put out is not only a satisfying one but it actually totally fits it totally fits it's like a a a secret about the world government well it it could be a poneglyph or whatever just information saying like the world government is a joke like the world you live in is a joke because it's not based on anything like you have the right to be free uh, like, you should just, like, not listen to authority. Your journey has, like, brought you here to show you that, like, you guys did more than the world government was ever capable of doing. Why would you ever have them tell you what to fucking do when you're so much more capable on your own as individuals as opposed to this giant fucking bureaucracy or whatever trying to control your fucking life? Just something along these lines. Well, I, I, I mean, I think what, is I was, what's what I was actually happen. asking is is more of, like, Mm-hmm. If it were something quote unquote more substantial than a story or nothing, oh um, I see. Okay, like what could it even be that would be satisfying? What would they thinking it would be? Like oh, I don't it's, think it's there's a any physical object, super devil fruit, or it's okay. Like you know what? I, I will say I, I should money. mention like what could it actually <laughs> like, be? Oh, it's the tree from which all devil fruits grow. Okay, no, it's no, it's. Retarded. I mean, that's not like. The worst idea ever, but like that's not it, how devil it, fruits work, though. <laughs> we know that. Well, it's <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I mean, look, we know it's related to like D stuff, void century stuff, uh, ancient weapons stuff. All those things relate to like the world government, and you know, like like the celestial dragons and the D's who we know are like the opposing clan or like something like that. That were the residents of that unnamed kingdom, we don't we don't we don't know what it is, but we know it relates to that. Like, could it be some ancient weapon? I mean, I I guess that's possible. Could it be Joy Boy just saying like, I don't know, uh, here's some treasure. Lo- oh, 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 I was gonna say like we shouldn't forget the very first thing, the most important theme of One Piece is personal treasure. Maybe it's something that Joy Boy was his personal treasure. But like that might it might be like a fucking a fucking silly old hat, you know, what a silly sword, something he liked, a, a jewel, a, a I don't know, whatever, like his pet dog buried here because that was his most important treasure, whatever it was. But like, even if that's literally what One Piece is, the point of it, I think, will be to imply that like all this stuff I've been talking about yeah. about how like you know, there it's a personal treasure to Joy Boy. Just like the Straw Hat's a personal treasure to Luffy and Shanks and Gold Roger and all that stuff. But what it means, what it what it's getting at, is this larger thing of, like, no one has the right to tell you what's important and what's not important. You have the right to decide your own life. Fuck the world government. Uh, they don't d- deserve their power, so fuck them. Take yeah. them down, boys. I feel Something like, 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 for me, the mm-hmm. idea that the world government is bad is so obvious in the story already that it's yeah. sort of 
come, goes without saying almost that, uh, you know, their government thing is a sham. If you're a pirate, you already kind of know that go, to get here. And so for it to be that mm. funny to all of them, I feel like it's, a, you know, it has to be something... Sp like, I'm basically I'm saying I hope that when the panel arrives that we see mm -hmm. it, I'm also yeah. laughing because it's a funny joke that is, I... like, visually funny. I hope so. And you know what? Like, the thing is, I've been, with moments like this, this is, like, the most important panel in all of One Piece, almost. Um, I feel like it will be something like that. I think it will be, hopefully, something surprising. I, I can't guess at everything that Oda's Oh, dude, trying it's a to mirror. A mirror. Lol, you're so cool, Roger. Look how cool you are. Uh, <laughs> you are the I, treasure. I, it's you the whole time. I am I am so okay with One Piece being a literal joke at the end of One Piece. Of course, as long as there's also another shoe that drops. Like there's a, like the point of it is like you know fuck the world government because that's obviously what One Piece is building to fuck yeah. the world government mm -hmm. and uh, we it's, deserve it, to be free. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely that. So th I guess that's about it, it. It would be it would be wrong for One Piece mm -hmm. to become more serious at the end. I, I agree. I totally agree. We don't want it to be like an epic, like like a, a becomes like a war story about yeah, like, like the then like, the twenty year war of the revolutionaries or the whatever. Fucking, like speaking of Naruto and Bleach, uh, yeah. Bleach. I mean, it sort of got bad quite early on and continued to be bad over and over again. But it's <laughs> it was fine, you know, it was all right. But yeah, it was yeah. it was never as quite as fun um, in the later arcs as it was when it was like. Ichigo trying to save Rukia from the thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. I, I love my friends. I'm going to save my friends. And then it was like depressing stuff over and over again. The Everything yep. sucks and power levels. And, and that was and it. Th there's nothing wrong then, with a more with, serious tone on, on occasion, but it's, it's, it's fine. Like, it's just can like, it sustain the narrative it's the, it's forever? It's the sort of thing that happens to all of these shonens, like Naruto yeah. as well. Um, Naruto used to be like a little bit of a fun sort of adventure thing mm -hmm. where. Naruto would go with his friends to do ninja things, and he would fail because he sucks. But then sometimes right. he was cool, and it was like, ah, oh, cool. I, I can't wait for him to be Hokage. And then, you know, a war, and wars, and more wars, and killing, and blood, and everyone's coming back to life and being killed, and it's the world ending, and yeah, it's just so big and powerful, and it's like, there's no fun, and there's no fun anymore. I'm not having fun. So yep. many of these shonen, they get so wrapped up in the world is ending, and we have to fight. And we have to train mm. so that we can fight to save the world. That they don't stop to have fun moments. Like Dragon Ball Z. I've, I've heard Dragon Ball Z heard, is the one uh, one of the only uh, yeah. other shonen that keeps it funny because Akira Toriyama likes to be funny and it, he's good. You know, at that. you know, Gib. I heard it said, and I agree with this. That like this panel, this panel is like archetypal of what One Piece is. This like represents laughing, just laughing, man, just having a good time on your adventure. But also that, like, this panel is to One Piece what the heart panel is to Bleach. It's, like, everything joyous and everything celebratory about One Piece is in this one panel. This glorious, big, smiling face of Roger just crying from laughter. I just, I don't know, whatever secret he's just learned after this incredible journey he's been on for his whole life. Versus, not, not to shit on Bleach too much, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Like, this is a panel that will be remembered for how powerful it is. While the heart uh, stands in in stark opposition to uh, you know what's the, what's the heart the, the point again? Of the series. It's it's the two double blank pages that just has the word the heart in the center from Bleach. It's a uh, oh. I mean this is the wonderful yeah. <laughs> Not to shun it too much. I'm joking around, yeah, but yeah. Uh, he he loves those those uh, those titles. That, indeed, that Tite Kubo. It, it, by the way, um, I'm sure you are as well. We're doing this, but like I was, this whole section, like this is Roger standing on. I'm, so, I'm probably gonna call it Raft Tail, just because it's easier to say. But I'll try to do Laugh Tail. I just say um, Laugh Tail. Laugh Tail. So he's standing on Laugh Land, and like Lapland. in the back, we just see him. I think maybe the reason why it reminds me of the hard panel is because it's just white backgrounds behind uh, Roger. But it's because I think Oda is trying to hide every detail about what this place is. He might not even know what he wants this place to look like. Oh, ultimately. I'm sure he knows what the place looks like if he knows what One Piece looks like at this point. He's got to know Maybe. what it looks like. Uh, it is possible. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter what the place looks like, but to save those details for then, 
uh, is, is perfectly fine. And I, I'm very eager to... I was scouring these panels for every bit. So, I mean, shit. What have we well, learned here? What we've le- well, what we can tell from if mm. we're trying to look at things is, like, he is laughing, he's standing up, and he's not holding mm-hmm. anything. So it's not a book. And the whole crew True. is standing, you know, at looking at it. So it's, yep. a th- it's a big thing that you can see from some distance. And it could be a small thing that he picked it. up and put on a thing. I mean, we don't know. We don't really know. We don't know exactly, but mm-hmm. it's it's safe to say that it's not, like, you know, a very small thing. It's something you could see. It's something that looks like something that you could look at and be in a big double-page spread. Probably. Probably true. In issue 1111. Episode, oh, uh, this chapter. chapter... 967, we're finally getting some information about what the fuck One Piece is. A, a little bit roundabout where it is and how to get there and all that shit. It took so long to get like a Roger flashback, a proper Roger flashback. But we're fucking there through the eyes of Odin. And Odin's been kind of kicked to the back fucking seat of his own flashback, but uh, can't blame him. There's a Chad on stage. Get the fuck out of here. The Chad's been upstaged by an even bigger Chad. You, you yeah. hate to see it. You hate to see we, it. We but, thought he uh, was the chattest man you could ever be, and then he met Whitebeard, and then he met Gold Roger, and yeah, it was all... Yeah. You say you can't okay, compete. but I, I think, I, I feel very likely that after this next chapter and whatnot, we'll see um, uh, Roger probably going to the gallows. Uh, we'll see Odin on his way back home um, to, to... And we'll be, like, back focused on Odin, at least by the end, as we kind of deal with probably Roger's death. I'm guessing next chapter, but, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <sighs> they made it, boys. We're on Raftel at this very moment. We see Roger and the gang laughing it up there. What a journey. Yeah. What a fucking journey. Can't wait to see it with our boys, with our fam. Yeah, Sloopy there should gang. be a chapter next week, so stay tuned. Uh, you know, I actually think that there's a New Year's break, which we, this is the thing I always say, like, oh, I think there's oh. one. There, there's they, no break, but usually, I think... Uh, do they usually say that there's a break? Like, it'll be on break? Well, it, it it's because they say, like, it won't be in the next Shonen Jump, but it will be in the next Shonen Jump. It's just that that jump, like, I think is in, like, two or three weeks from now. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. That I believe that's the case. Someone can double check, but uh, I think that's the case. So you probably won't see us for a little bit, but as soon as it's back, we will we'll be on the case. And, uh, I mean, god damn. This, uh, this was a powerful chapter, obviously. So Incredible many Incredible details. So many things... To, to mm-hmm. that were like new information, confusing information. Mm-hmm. So much of Roger's story is packed into these small few chapters. So Indeed. it's so impressive how like all of this manages to be like extremely expository and still mm-hmm. like visually charming and not crowded and really cool. It's it's very true. It's a masterful work. I think we all understand that. I think so. I think so. And, and you know, I'll, I'll just mention that uh, as we see Roger sailing around, he's still got that big fucking egg on his ship, but he had it before he got to Raftel. So we know that the egg is not One Piece. It's not blah, blah, blah. I think we already knew yeah. that. But, like, I'm just, I'm still very fucking curious. What the fuck is in that egg? Do you know, I mean, do you know what? Maybe that egg still hasn't hatched. And maybe, he left it in One Piece. Maybe that egg... He's been ho- keeping it so that he he could hatch it, but he died before it could could be hatched. I don't know where the Oro Jackson is. I don't know if it was ever said what happened to it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I but don't if know. that if that uh, the pirate ship um, is around, the mm. egg might still be there and might hatch when they find it, if they find it. Oh, I, I suppose it's hard to know how important that egg is to the narrative. Could I be I think I think it would be a nice little thing if they like find. Uh, maybe it's just at Raftel and they got a, like a taxi back or some mm-hmm. some sort of strange thing like they had another ship or I don't know or the egg was just left in, in Laftail um, but like when they get there it, 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 it hatches and it's like oh caca, I'm a bird and then you like or a dinosaur I'm a, I'm a fucking pterodactyl I'm gonna pick you up and I'm gonna throw you mm-hmm. and, that, and that's mm-hmm. like uh, they fly to the top of the red line on it or something I mean, it is kind of a mystery if or how they got over the uh, reverse mountain, which does not have, like, a river that leads from, like, up that thing. It's just a sheer mountain face. So, like, how the fuck did they climb that? I don't, I don't know. I don't think we have an answer for that, but... Uh, well, hang on. How did they get to East Blue to see the bridge anyway? Do they just go through the calm belt? 
and back. They they must have gone through the comm belt. There's no other way uh, out that I that I know of. I don't know. They could have just. I mean, this this crew is strong enough to just fight any sea kings that attack them. I would assume. Yeah, but the uh, thing is, there's no wind. That's that's the problem. They rode real hard and real fast. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. The only other way is you, you can't go backwards around a reverse mountain, like through the river going the other way. No, you that can't wouldn't make any go sense. up the waterfall. They could do the Kairoseki thing. But that's like a new technology, though, so I don't think that uh, they had that back then. I think I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Like, sometimes there's, there's a, ships that go from the Grand Line to certain east or west blues. I, I also, assume they just have like like mm -hmm. merchant ships and world government uh, ships they they have the thing to stop the sea kings and they have paddles. But I, don't I know. I'll say one thing. I don't think this is true and that did look like to kill a wolf. It's possible that the world nobles were building more than one bridge. Uh like so maybe they just happened to find another uh but it was like snowing. bridge it being was constructed. The, it was the same sort of it looked exactly the same. I, they were wearing. There's I, no reason I, I it would snowing. be a, di a different one if they weren't. I it mean, just I doesn't. It seems nonsensical. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. I don't know any other reason why it would be um, for anything else. So I don't fucking know. Uh, we will just have to see. I guess. And what then comes there's in the, 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 the other thing of like, how do the kings mm -hmm. go to Reverie? It, where, where does that take place? Um. Well, there's technology now that you can use. I mean, like, you can coat the bottom of your boat with Kairoseki to sail through the comm belt, generally speaking. Um, if you, you know, you'd have to row like or use a motor to, to or something. To get through from north to south to east to west blue, you have to go through the Grand Line or over the Red Line. You are... So it's uh, like you all know, of these places hmm. are so... Like, either they're more connected through the Grand Line than we think they are, or they have some other way to get around. I, because, I have a guess. Or they're just it not could... as connected. Well, okay, if, if the red line touches every sea, so it is possible that they sail along the sea to, like, the corner where, like, the comm belt would intersect with um, the red line. And th we know that, like, there was that red port or whatever that um, I think the Alabasta and the, the Dressrosa crew took with Garp or, or whoever the fuck that was. There could be ports that lead you up the red line, and then you make the rest of the journey on the red line through, like, pathways or something on the mountain. Uh... I mean, that's possible. I don't know, but uh, we know that you can. There are elevators up there, so that might be part of it. I don't know. It's the best I got. Yeah. Well, that's enough heavy speculation for today. Indeed. Indeed. I uh, uh, hope you have enjoyed, ladies and gents. There's lots more juicy shit coming, uh, ho I think, in a couple weeks when we come back. So we'll see where this all fucking resolves. But what an incredible way to round out the decade of One Piece. I don't know how long you've been reading, boys and girls, but for me it's been a long time, and uh, it feels... I, I feel that there's a calculation, like, the, the, the time that you put into One Piece, like, the more time you've stewed on it, you get more out of it. So, I, I, that's not a slight against anybody who got into it recently or anything, but, like, I mean, for me, this is just, like, such big moments. One Piece has been with me, like, my whole fucking life, almost, since I was, like, 12 or something. Uh, so, I, I feel a big big feels when things like this happen and I uh even people who are started reading fucking yesterday and are now caught up I hope that you also feel the gravitas Gee, you started yesterday and caught up today you are a very fast reader that speedy reader who did that my favorite uh you know my favorite member of the crew uh <laughs> whoever the fuck it is out there I just I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am and you know uh, nothing things aren't perfect you know but uh great series no, they are it's, they are perfect it's perfect it's just, it's just perfect and of course, uh, things aren't perfect with the translation either. Pointed out a couple things, but big thanks again to the podcasts, to the pod D scans, scan. the potty scans for doing their work. They're, I think they're going to keep at it. and They're going to improve each time. Uh, I want to, I want to help if I can to make these as. I mean, uh, my number one value is accuracy of translation. Everything else is unimportant by comparison, uh, in my opinion. So uh, I hope they, they keep working at it. I, you guys are doing great work. You are currently making the best English scans that exist anywhere in the world. So uh, keep it up, yes. guys. You're doing great work. Very nice. Maybe open a fucking Patreon so people will pay you for the job. But then again, then you'll probably get sued because uh, Viz no likey that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any suggestions. Um, but it's, it's a valuable service. Uh, speaking of which, patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates to support us on our show here which yes. we very much appreciate. 
And uh, of course, you can join the Discord down below, which will give you access to all the fun discussions we have about One Piece. And if you are a Patreon member, you'll be in there with a beautiful color, a member of the crew, and we will say thank you. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter crew. at a re, now a real pirate crew doing real pirate activities. There is of also, of course, the uh, Twitter at Podcast Ahoy, where we will retweet these. I, I should be retweeting the fucking chapters translated by the uh, these guys oh, on yeah, that. Uh, I, I'll do that once I'm done with this, so that everybody can see it. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that's it. So stay tuned if you want to follow that Twitter. As soon as there's announcements, I will make an effort to retweet it from that Twitter account. So uh, you guys can keep your eyes peeled. Maybe they'll maybe they'll start one too that I can retweet. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, thanks again, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for being around. Uh, ten more years of One Piece. Here we come, baby. Oh my oh, god! You know it was interesting looking at that uh, at that globe I mentioned way before. That I'll, I'll see if I can find. You can see that Luffy's starting East Blue. They make their way around the half of the world. They make their way around. They're about a halfway through. There's just there's just like a quarter of the Grand Line left until they're at the end goal. So every moment we're getting closer and closer to the the finale of One Piece. And I think that I, I trust Oda. I trust Oda to deliver. I have faith. I, I, I Some things I doubt Oda on, but not this. I think he'll deliver a satisfying thing. He's, oh, uh, yeah. he's proved himself to me. So we'll see. We'll get there together, boys. All right. See you next time. It'll have a good time. A couple weeks, probably. And uh, take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah.